If you like the story you can support the author on Patreon link is in the description. Chapter 1, Template System Hidden Leaf Village A young figure kept swinging his wooden sword under the scorching sun, sticky sweat clinging to his eyes. His back was already soaked with sweat. But his focus was unprecedentedly concentrated, as if he was in a battle with someone right in front of him. Ha dot. Raijiro gasped heavily, his spirit seemingly reaching its limit. Ignoring the dirt beneath him, Raijiro collapsed directly onto the ground. His arms were numb and swollen, weak with fatigue. Every day, Raijiro would battle with the hawk-eyed figure in his spiritual space and learn his swordsmanship. Character Template, Dracul My Hawk Character Unlock Progress, 1% If my strength reaches my hawk's level, even if I'm no match for a six-paths level powerhouse, I'll be able to rival a cage. Raijiro muttered to himself with closed eyes. Yes, Raijiro had arrived in the Naruto world. Without a cool background or a bloodline, not even his parents survived the Third Shinobi World War. Surviving on the village's compensation, Raijiro managed to get by. Raijiro was a transmigrator and was familiar with everything about Naruto world. Cage, during this period, indeed belonged to the transcendent powerhouses, but by the later stages of the world, the cages of the so-called five great ninja villages were all single-handedly defeated by Uchihamadara. Cage seemed so small in front of Uchihamadara, let alone that at the time, Uchihamadara was only at the level of a cage. Once at the level of the six paths, whether it was a cage or a Hokage, the difference couldn't be measured in quantity anymore, they existed in different dimensions. He arrived in the Naruto world and gained the character template system. Unlock the first template. Dracul My Hawk. The great swordsman of the One Piece world, Raijiro, who was familiar with anime, naturally understood how powerful My Hawk was. His mountain splitting and sea splitting slashes were no less impressive than S rank ninjutsu, and the key was that they didn't require chakra or hand seals. A single slash was comparable to an S rank ninjutsu. Raijiro rested for a while with his eyes closed before starting to control his chakra again. The method of controlling chakra was taught to him by Irika. His parents who died in this world were friends of Irika because of his reclusive nature, Irika took care of him very well. For someone of Raijiro's age to be able to manipulate chakra was rare. The kids around his age near his home couldn't compare to him at all. To become a ninja, chakra was absolutely indispensable. Chakra was also a unique energy characteristic of the Naruto world. Only those with chakra in their bodies could perform ninjutsu. Raijiro condensed his chakra, concentrating it in his hands, rapidly flowing and compressing it into a pale blue spherical shape in his hands. Bang Raijiro's rays nan struck the tree trunk. The trunk suddenly caved in, revealing a deep crack, and the flaw that spread from the center of the defect spread outward. Who, who, who? Raijiro breathed heavily. His body was still too weak, just using the rays nan had drained his chakra. He still needed to become stronger, his current strength was not enough. The various monstrous bloodlines and abnormalities in the Naruto world were something he didn't have. The only thing he could rely on was the system and his own efforts. As the avid watcher of Naruto series Raijiro remembered Jiraiya teaching Naruto about Rei's Nan, so using the same idea Raijiro also tried to learn it, but for him it took many months as he had no help from any teacher, so only way he could do it was by trial and error, at last he succeeded. Raijiro knew that in this world that was filled with beings that could easily destroy planets, he couldn't just rely on my hawk template to protect himself, he wanted to be ready to face and defeat powerhouses like Madara, Atsutsukis, Ten Tails, etc. And for that he would use everything available, every useful jutsu that would add up on his swordsmanship, he would learn them. He had also learned a lot of other useful jutsu like transformation jutsu, body flicker jutsu, shadow clone jutsu, etc. from the scrolls left by his parents. In the anime, Naruto could easily release the Rei's Nan because of his Uzumaki lineage, and he was also the inheritor of Azura's chakra. And Suzuki possessed the Uchiha bloodline and later unlocked the Mangekyo Sharingan, and even the Rinnegan. Compared to these two monsters, he was far behind. After regaining his spirit, Raijiro gripped the sword in his hand, a hint of determination flashing in his eyes. He could begin now. In the vast spiritual world, a figure of a black-haired, hawk-eyed man stood in front of Raijiro, with eyes as sharp as an eagle's. At this moment, my hawk was about the same height as Raijiro. The my hawk in the spiritual space was the same age as Raijiro, and only if Raijiro's swordsmanship reached a certain level would the my hawk in the spiritual space change. This was my hawk. Indeed extraordinary. 
Although those sharp eyes were still somewhat naive, they reflected a heart yearning for swordsmanship and lofty enthusiasm. This wasn't Raijiro's first time fighting Myhawk in the spiritual space. Before this, Raijiro and Myhawk had fought no less than ten times. Yet even so, Myhawk in the spiritual space would catch every tiny flaw and defeat him each time. Victory or defeat was just a thought away. Outside. Raijiro stood in the vast forest, gripping his sword, his expression constantly changing, beads of sweat dripping from his forehead. In a short time, Raijiro's face was covered with sweat, so much so that it was raining sweat. A shadow flashed through the forest, curious eyes watching Raijiro, blood-red eyes and a black pupil. This person was undoubtedly of the Uchiha clan. Uchiha Shisui looked at Raijiro with curiosity. What was this kid doing? Although this forest belonged to Kanaha, there were many beasts here that a child couldn't handle. But for some reason, Shisui felt a strange feeling when he looked at Raijiro. The next moment, Raijiro trembled, his body bursting with a fierceness that belied his age, he opened his eyes, panting heavily. Shisui, who was watching from the shadows, felt this extraordinary aura and his eyes suddenly contracted, his gaze becoming serious. This kid was not simple. This aura wasn't something that someone of his age could possess. It seemed that the village had got another exceptional talent. A smile appeared at the corner of Shisui's mouth. The next moment, his figure disappeared. Raijiro sat on the ground, panting heavily, every inch of his body aching. The key was that at this point, his spirit had reached the edge of what he could bear and his once resolute gaze now looked weary. After regaining some strength, Raijiro disappeared into the forest. Effort was important, but blind effort would only backfire. Raijiro wouldn't do anything that would harm his body, even training was the same. If he exceeded his limits, Raijiro would choose to rest. Because of his reclusive nature, Raijiro had few friends, and he wasn't interested in making friends with those naive kids. He was working hard to become stronger, to control his own life and protect himself from any threats in this world. Uchiha Obito, Uchiha Madara, Kagaya. These powerful enemies were ones he would eventually face. Watching the treetops tremble as the wind blew through, Raijiro sighed silently. It's windy, the village won't be too peaceful. Chapter 2, Recommendation Letter Nighttime, in the Hokage's office. Sandame sama here are the documents for Raijiro. Thank you for your hard work. Saratobi Hirazan looked through the documents for Raijiro for a while. His background seems clean. His parents died in the Third Shinobi World War, leaving him alone at home. He often interacts with Irika, but he's a bit solitary. But since he received praise from Shisui, he probably isn't as simple as he appears on the surface. The village seems peaceful, but there's potential turmoil lurking beneath. If it erupts, it would be a devastating blow to the village. The Uchiha clan's dissatisfaction with the village is growing stronger, especially after the Nine Tails incident that led to the fourth Hokage's death. The Uchiha clan is currently on thin ice. Raijiro is old enough to enter the ninja academy. Why not arrange for him to go? Irika can pass on the message to him. Just Shisui's words alone wouldn't make Hiruzen pay attention to Raijiro. Only if Raijiro's brilliance truly reached the Hokage's office would Hiruzen focus on him. The matters within the village and the shinobi world are enough to give the elderly third Hokage a headache. Let's hope this hard-earned peace lasts a bit longer. Hiruzen sighed softly and continued with his administrative duties. The next day at noon, Raijiro woke up. Although his arms were a bit swollen, it didn't affect his training. Moreover, his spirits were fully restored. In yesterday's mental space battle, Raijiro rarely broke through with a move, but he was still defeated by Myhawk. But this battle brought him many insights. Character Template, Dracul Myhawk. Character Unlock Progress, 1.2%. This battle alone increased the progress by 0.2%, which could indeed be considered a significant gain. After a simple cleanup, Raijiro planned to continue training in his old place for the day. But as soon as he stepped out, he saw a familiar figure. Irika waved and smiled, Raijiro. Irika Sensei. What are you doing here? Irika smiled faintly, just passing by to see you. You haven't eaten yet, let me treat you to some ramen. Irika was one of the few people close to Raijiro, although Irika always treated him like a child. Because even though Raijiro appeared mature, in Irika's eyes, he was still just a child. Ichiraku Ramen, anyone who has watched Naruto would know about Ichiraku Ramen. 
and Ichiraku Ramen is accompanied by many memes. The current Ichiraku Ramen is just a small stall. Raijiro sat there, looking at the kind old man making ramen in front of him. This was Tuki, whom many fans believed to be an Atsutsuki in Raijiro's previous world. Tuki noticed Raijiro's curious gaze and couldn't help but feel a little puzzled. What was this kid looking at him for? Could it be that he looked too cool making ramen? He <laughs> he, probably. Raijiro, don't be polite, dig in. Irika smiled faintly. Even though Irika was an ordinary teacher and average ninja, Raijiro couldn't help but feel a slight fondness towards him. Irika was indeed like a small son, warming others. After finishing the ramen, Raijiro slowly said, Irika sensei, if you have something to say, just say it, no need to beat around the bush. Irika's expression froze for a moment, smiling apologetically, indeed, nothing can escape your notice. He had known Raijiro for half a year now. This strange kid had a mentality different from others his age. Sometimes talking to Raijiro felt like talking to someone his own age. Of course, Irika also felt that it was related to Raijiro's experiences. Losing his parents at such a young age had forced him to mature so much. He lacked the innocence and joy that children should have. This made Irika even more distressed about Raijiro. Raijiro, are you interested in entering the Ninja Academy? Irika spoke up. Ninja Academy? Raijiro was stunned. Damn it. The time for the Ninja Academy entrance exam was now. This is a recommendation letter from Hokage-sama. Irika handed the recommendation letter to Raijiro. Took his face showed a hint of surprise. A recommendation letter from Hokage-sama? This kid actually caught the attention of Hokage-sama? Even Irika himself found it a bit strange. Last night, Hokage-sama called him to his office and handed him the recommendation letter. Could it be that he had been in contact with Raijiro too frequently, so he caught the attention of Hokage-sama? Recommendation letter. Yesterday, when he returned from the mental world to reality, he could feel someone's gaze on him, but it disappeared in a short while. Raijiro's perception was beyond that of a normal person, surpassing his peers by far. After accepting the recommendation letter from Irika, Raijiro thanked him and disappeared from Irika's view. He didn't immediately reply to Irika. Because his time was precious, he didn't want to waste too much time on boring things. Training was his top priority. Raijiro entered his mental space again. After entering the system space, Raijiro's eyes were dispersed and void, like dead eyes. Two figures were fighting in the mental space. Although the young Myhawk looked tender, his sharp yellow eyes were captivating. Ding! 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 The blades collided. Raijiro's expression wasn't very good. Although it seemed evenly matched, in the small details, Raijiro was not as good as Myhawk. After about two hours, Raijiro gasped heavily as he exited the mental space. His arms were trembling because of the prolonged training. Character Template, Dracul Myhawk. Character Unlock Progress, 1.4%. Although it was just a 0.2% increase, each improvement was significant for Raijiro. Understanding of swordsmanship and sword techniques, accumulated combat experience from battle after battle in the mental world would become nourishment for Raijiro's growth. In addition to combat, Raijiro also needed to improve his physical strength. To unleash powerful strikes, strong physicality was indispensable. Push UPS, sit UPS, running around the forest ten times these were all essential training for Raijiro. The day passed quickly, and before he knew it, dusk had fallen. Chapter 3, Enrollment An, I know Niji is supposed to be older than Naruto and everyone else but, in this story, he is in same year as everyone else. It'll make sense in future chapters, as in this story he will have some more use and importance, hope you all understand. Also due to early graduation of Niji there won't be major changes in Team Guy, it will still be same team with Lee, Tenten, and Niji, but Raijiro and Niji will have good friendship. Now, don't ask me question regarding this, you'll get your answers in future chapters. If you want more information regarding this, go read information chapter at first. Also, this is just a fanfiction so just go with the flow. Enrollment, hey. Nightfall, as Raijiro lay on his bed, he pondered while looking at the recommendation letter beside him. The Kanaha Ninja Academy was established by the second Hokage, Tobirama Senju, to nurture the young blood of Kanaha. Its purpose was to ensure the inheritance of the will of fire. However, Raijiro, 
who knew all about the hidden darkness of Kanaha, knew that the village had a dark side. The roots of Kanaha had long been corrupted, with figures like Denzo Shimura lurking in the shadows of the Hokage, making it unimaginable. Those who believed in the will of fire probably didn't know that it was the benevolent third Hokage, along with Denzo's scheming, who caused the downfall of the Uchiha clan a year later. Enrolling meant the opportunity to learn more ninjutsu. Of course, the Ninja Academy didn't offer much in terms of techniques. What it did provide was ninja knowledge and education, focusing on Taijutsu, Shurikenjutsu, and practical combat training. Everyone from Kanaha 11 were already attending the Ninja Academy. They were the ones who will be key figures of Kanaha in future. But Ryajiro believed that with his system, he possessed infinite potential, and his future was no weaker than anyone else's. In that case, let's enroll. And slowly, get to know them. Dash. The next day, Ryajiro found Irika. You're enrolling. Irika looked at Ryajiro in surprise. Ryajiro nodded. Under Irika's guidance, Ryajiro entered the Ninja Academy. Ordinary civilians with poor aptitude had no chance of entering the Ninja Academy. The Ninja Academy was meant to train ninjas, and those without the potential to become ninjas had no qualification to enter. Currently, the most outstanding student of the Ninja Academy was Suzuki Uchiha of the Uchiha clan. Suzuki was the pride of the Uchiha clan, a renowned genius in the Ninja Academy and the object of admiration for many young girls. Which always confused Ryajiro as how could girls this young be crazy for a boy, maybe in this world due to wars and instability, girls matured much earlier, compared to Earth. Recommended by the Third Hokage. The headmaster of the Ninja Academy looked at Ryajiro with surprise. A person recommended by the third Hokage must be extraordinary. Irika, let this kid be in your class. The headmaster put away the recommendation letter and said to Irika. Irika had no objections. From the beginning, he hoped Ryajiro would be in his class. Leading Ryajiro to the classroom, Irika stopped him with one hand at the door, and as he looked up, his mind was filled with dark thoughts. Surely, it was another prank by Naruto. Naruto wasn't mature yet and was famous in the class for being a troublemaker and a slacker. Pushing open the door, a pot of white powder fell, and Irika stepped back with Ryajiro. At that moment, Naruto with his blonde hair excitedly looked at the door. When he saw Irika staring at him with a dark face, he immediately lowered his head and took out a book to cover his face. Such a boring game could only be played by Naruto. Irika led Ryajiro into the classroom, attracting the curiosity of many students. Ryajiro scanned the people in their seats. Yamanaka Ino, Harano Sakura, Uzumaki Naruto, Uchiha Suzuki, Akimichi Koji. The future of Kanaha were all gathered in this class. Sakura, haven't you noticed how handsome this guy is? Ryajiro's handsome appearance, dark green eyes, and unique temperament instantly caught Ino's attention. Sakura pouted, humph, he's nothing compared to our Suzuki. You. Since when did Suzuki become yours? Suzuki belongs to me. Compared to the stunning arrival of Ryajiro, Ino still preferred Suzuki, whom she had known for a long time. Sasuke's cold demeanor and his status as an Uchiha made him the object of admiration for many girls in the class. Before long, Sakura and Ino began to argue. Sakura. Ino. What are you two doing? Irika scolded both of them. Sakura and Ino stopped, coldly glancing at each other before snorting. Cough, cough off. From now on, Ryajiro will be part of our class. You are classmates now. Ryajiro, sit there. Irika pointed to a seat. Ryajiro looked over, and his gaze slightly changed. Who was that girl? Haiga Hinata? Hinata noticed Ryajiro's gaze, her small face blushed shyly as she lowered her head, making her even cuter. However, there was a hostile gaze directed at Hinata. It was Niji. The current Niji harbored only hatred for the main family. Hinata, as a member of the main family, in Niji's eyes, was not worthy of the main family's status with her gentle personality. Ryajiro walked over and sat down next to Hinata. Hello, I'm Ryajiro. Ryajiro flashed a bright smile, a smile that stirred the hearts of countless girls in the classroom. Compared to Sasuke's cold indifference, at this moment, they were more enamored with Ryajiro. H. Hello. I'm Hinata Hayaga. Hinata stuttered shyly, not daring to meet Ryajiro's eyes, even her speech was low, as she kept her head down. Ryajiro didn't mind. He knew Hinata's personality was like this. 
even speaking to the opposite sex made her blush. Especially in front of the uniquely charming Ryajiro. Suzuki glanced at Ryajiro with disdain and clicked his tongue. For this person who stole his limelight, Suzuki was still somewhat discontented. He was a genius of the Uchiha clan. How could he be overshadowed by a commoner? Class time passed quickly, with only a few students in the classroom paying attention. Even Ryajiro immersed himself in his own mental space, battling with young Myhawk. Hinata, who was beside him, watched Ryajiro attentively. He's sweating so much. What's wrong with him? He's been sweating non-stop. Although the weather is hot now, it's very cool inside the classroom unlike outside. Is Ryajiro feeling unwell? Suddenly, Ryajiro opened his eyes wide, panting heavily. Sweat dripped from his eyebrows, and his face showed signs of exhaustion. Ryajiro, this is for you. Hinata's voice was smaller than a mosquito's, as she handed a handkerchief to Ryajiro, keeping her head down. Ryajiro was taken aback for a moment, then smiled, Thank you, Hinata. After saying this, Hinata's face turned even redder. Ryajiro wiped away the sweat from his forehead, hesitated for a moment, and decided not to return the handkerchief, which was soaked with sweat, to Hinata. Ino and Sakura looked at Hinata and Ryajiro in surprise. Hinata actually talked to someone, that's rare, and it's Ryajiro. Could it be that Ryajiro is Hinata's type? Everyone present knew about Hinata's shy and timid personality, which had always been a problem. Even communicating with others was particularly difficult for her. But Sakura and Ino had looked a few times and found that it was Hinata who took the initiative to talk to Ryajiro, which surprised them both. At the same time, Niji also looked at Ryajiro and Hinata with a gloomy expression. His fists clenched tightly, even trembling from the force. Chapter 4, You're Not Bad After class, a curious Naruto came over and greeted Ryajiro. Hey, green eyes. Since you're a transfer student, you should be very strong, right? How about sparring with me, the strongest in the class, Naruto-sama? Pfft. Naruto's words made everyone in the class unable to hold back their laughter. Ha ha ha, Naruto is bragging again. He's obviously a loser. The strongest in the class is obviously Suzuki. Other classmates mercilessly mocked Naruto. But two sharp gazes fell on Ryajiro, one from Niji, and the other from Suzuki. They were both curious about Ryajiro's strength. This person is Lady Hinata's friend, so he's my enemy. He stole my spotlight. Next time we spar, I'll make sure this guy feels my power. Niji and Suzuki had different thoughts, but they both saw Ryajiro as a thorn in their side. Arg. You guys are so annoying. I'm not a loser. Naruto's face flushed red as he glared at them angrily. Ryajiro couldn't help but chuckle. Right now, you're no match for me. You're too weak. Damn it, don't underestimate me. I'll show you how strong I am. Transformation Jutsu. With a poof, smoke billowed, and Naruto transformed into Irika, pointing at Ryajiro and laughing, how about that? I'm amazing, right? Ryajiro couldn't help but face palm. Naruto at this time was still just a child. It would be difficult to communicate with him normally. TCH, it's just transformation jutsu. Suzuki looked at Naruto with disdain and clicked his tongue. Ryajiro sighed helplessly and formed hand seals. Poof. Another puff of smoke, and another Ryajiro appeared beside the first one. What's this? Shadow clone jutsu. Is he really the same age as us? The appearance of Ryajiro's shadow clones caused a commotion in the classroom. The kids were amazed at Ryajiro's skill. The shadow clone jutsu that Ryajiro displayed was something even Suzuki and Niji hadn't mastered yet. But Ryajiro had already mastered it proficiently. Ryajiro-kun, you're amazing. Hinata's small eyes widened in admiration as she looked at Ryajiro. Damn it. It's just clones. I can do it too. Unwilling to admit defeat, Naruto dispelled his transformation jutsu. Clone jutsu. Poof. A clone of Naruto appeared next to him, instantly causing the whole class to burst into laughter. Although you're a loser, Naruto, you're good at entertaining everyone. If you can't become a ninja, you should join the circus as an actor. That would suit you well. And shadow clones are not the same as clones. Shadow clones are a higher level jutsu than clones. Mockery, ridicule, disdain. Ryajiro looked at the dejected Naruto and couldn't help but sigh. 
This was the treatment Naruto received now. In fact, Naruto's talent was not bad, he was not inferior to geniuses like Suzuki. The reason he couldn't use ninjutsu at this time was because his chakra needed to suppress the nine tails to stabilize the seal. Ryajiro glanced at Hinata again. Did my arrival change the story? It seemed that Hinata in this period didn't have any admiration for Naruto. Instead, she mostly felt more pity and sympathy for him. Naruto, you're not strong enough yet. Come challenge me when you've improved. Ryajiro was taller than everyone in the classroom. Although he was the same age as them, he seemed more like an adult. You're not bad. Naruto's body trembled, his eyes turning red as he looked at Ryajiro. Ryajiro, you. Naruto forcibly held back his tears. Neglected for so long and subjected to everyone's malice, Naruto was moved by Ryajiro's simple words. He wiped away the tears at the corner of his eyes and said proudly, I don't need you to tell me that. I'm gonna be the Hokage, believe it. Yes. The future seventh Hokage. With the chakra of Azura, you're practically a child of destiny. If Ryajiro hadn't awakened the system, he might have to rely on Naruto to live out his remaining years. The others didn't understand why Ryajiro would express kindness to Naruto when he was clearly a loser. This loser sometimes even caused the whole class to be punished, which was extremely annoying. Then it was time for class. Iruka walked in and frowned when he saw Naruto's red eyes. Naruto, what's wrong with you? Did something happen? It's okay. Naruto quickly returned to his seat. Iruka was puzzled. Was this kid being bullied? A day passed like this, and ninja school's lessons left Raijiro feeling bored. Some lessons were about the history of the Shinobi World War, the history of Kanaha's development, and the greatness of the Hokage through the ages, which were all nonsense to Raijiro, who was familiar with the history of the Kanaha. After leaving the school gates, Raijiro bid farewell to Hinata and planned to continue training. But on the way, a figure blocked his path. Raijiro looked with interest at the expressionless boy in front of him. Niji, what's the matter with you? Raijiro grinned. It was obvious to Raijiro that it must have been something related to Hinata with why he was stopped by Niji. Niji hated Hinata and hated everyone from the main family. Anyone who had contact with Hinata at school were also hated by Niji. He was a genius, a rare genius of the Hyaga clan, but because of the division between the main family and the branch family, geniuses like him were meant to serve the main family. The caged bird cursed seal on his forehead was the branch family's shackles to the main family. If it weren't for this cursed seal, his father might not have been killed by the main family. Stop associating with Lady Hinata, she's not someone a commoner like you has the right to be friends with. Niji looked coldly at Raijiro, his white eyes particularly cold. Who Hinata chooses to associate with isn't something a member of the branch family like you can dictate. Raijiro said calmly. Besides, as a member of the branch family, you don't have the authority to interfere in Hinata's friendships. Veins bulged on Niji's forehead, and chakra surged from his body. Clearly, Raijiro's words had provoked Niji. Humph. In the end, Niji just snorted coldly, suppressing his emotions. Is rationality above hatred? Raijiro smiled faintly as he watched Niji's back. He wasn't afraid of Niji. Although his talent might not be as good as Niji's, he had put in much more effort than these geniuses. At this time, Niji's strength surpassed that of most people his age. Even the current Suzuki might not be able to easily handle Niji. Raijiro had been increasing his chakra reserves since he was a child. Now, his chakra was no less than that of a mid-level jonin. Moreover, he had techniques like Ray's Nan an A-rank ninjutsu, and a physique surpassing his peers. He might have the strength to fight Niji. But what he lacked now was a good sword. Raijiro was a swordsman, and only with a sword in hand could he fully unleash his complete strength. Chapter 5, Uchiha Ataki The next day, Raijiro left early, carrying a wooden sword on his back. For some reason, the wooden sword gave Raijiro a sense of security. Character Template, Dracul My Hawk Character Unlock Progress, 1.6% It's still only 1.6%. I wonder when I'll be able to hear the breath of all things. Only a swordsman who can hear the breath of all things has the possibility to reach higher realms. The first step to becoming a swordsman is to become one with the sword, listen to the breath of all things. Anything in this world has breath. Only by hearing that faint breath can one have the chance to cut off everything. So, then as a swordsman, one will be unstoppable. 
It's a long road ahead for me to become a swordsman. The problem is the damage my wooden sword can cause is too small. If I encounter real danger, this wooden sword will be useless. I also want a good sword, but when I went to the blacksmith, he refused me outright because of this young body. At the academy gate, Ryajiro suddenly stopped, looking at two figures. Black short hair, blood red eyes, unique tear troughs, and a cold demeanor. Uchiha Taki. The man who bore the darkness of Kanaha, Ryajiro always felt that it was such a pity for a genius like Uchiha Taka to meet his death in such a way. Including the current Shisui. Soon, even Shisui, a prodigy like him, would fall. Itaka was already a member of the ANBU, serving as a double spy for both the Uchiha and Kanaha. Forgive me, Suzuki. Next time. With a smile on his face, Itaka tapped a finger at Sasuke's forehead. Suzuki currently is completely obsessed with his older brother. Likewise, if it came to it, Itaka would never turn against Kanaha but choose to annihilate the Uchiha clan, leaving only Suzuki behind. Ultimately, Itaka's choice was just a lack of trust in his father. Uchiha Fugaku, who possessed the Manjiki Sharingan, could have already acted to overthrow the Kanaha leadership if he wanted to. He could have incited another Nine Tails incident, but Fugaku suppressed the dissent within the Uchiha clan. Between the clan and Kanaha, Itaki ultimately chose Kanaha. And made the young Suzuki bear a deep hatred. Humph, brother, you say that every time. I don't believe you anymore. Suzuki coldly snorted. Itaki patted Sasuke's head, then watched as he entered the school. Only then did he notice Raijiro's gaze. Black short hair, dark green eyes. Was this the boy Shisui mentioned? He does give off a different vibe. I wonder why he keeps staring at me, and Itaka felt a hint of pity in Ryajiro's eyes. Am I mistaken? I have never met this boy before, perhaps I'm mistaken. But even Shisui found this boy interesting, which was intriguing. Itaki only glanced at him briefly before leaving. After all, the Uchiha clan and the Kanaha leadership are at odds, and the Uchiha clan was already discussing a coup. Although Shisui has made thorough preparations to use Kota Amatsukami when the Uchiha clan launches the coup, he did not anticipate Danzo's manipulations from behind the scenes. It's regrettable. Shisui's talent was even more outstanding than Itaka's. Raijiro kun. Hinata saw Raijiro lowering her head shyly and greeted him. It's Hinata. Let's go together. Raijiro smiled. Plop. Hinata's heart skipped a beat, and she shyly replied, lowering her head as she walked into the school with Raijiro. At this time, Hinata didn't have a dependency on Naruto like in the anime, rather. Ahem. An evil thought crossed Raijiro's mind. Naruto. I'm sorry. In the original anime, Hinata was like the epitome of a good wife and loving mother, a girl like her would be hard to resist for anyone. Though my actions are akin to that of a scoundrel, Hinata and Naruto haven't married yet. Besides their friendship as classmates, there are no other feelings between them. When did Hinata become so close to Raijiro? I didn't see that coming. The usually shy Hinata actually took the initiative. Raijiro looks good too, but I still prefer Suzuki. Though Ino and Sakura bickered often, their relationship wasn't bad. Seeing Hinata and Raijiro walking into school together surprised them a bit. I asked my dad yesterday. Raijiro was recommended to the school by the third Hokage. Recommended by the Hokage. Sakura covered her mouth in shock, looking at Raijiro incredulously. What secrets does Raijiro hold to get recommended by the Hokage to enter the school? Most of the time at the Ninja Academy, Raijiro didn't really listen to the lectures. He already knew this knowledge by heart. Most of the time, Raijiro immersed himself in his spiritual world, comprehending the battles with my hawk. Only in this way could he quickly improve his strength and the progress of his character template. He had to step into the realm of swordsmen as soon as possible, so he could unleash flying slashes comparable to a rank ninjutsu and the attention from his classmates towards Raijiro gradually decreased. Although many girls wanted to talk to Raijiro, his attitude towards them was completely different from his attitude towards Hinata. It's this disparity in attitude that made many people resent Raijiro. Of course, what's even more incomprehensible is that Raijiro actually has such a good relationship with Naruto, the loser. Naruto has always been rejected and questioned by the villagers, and there are only a few in the academy willing to accept him. But later in the series, Naruto gained the recognition of the villagers step by step through his own efforts. In the forest. Naruto panted heavily as he lay on the ground, 
covered in various injuries, none of which were serious, just minor scratches. Ah! <laughs> Rai Gyro. Why do I always lose to you? Naruto shouted unwillingly. Rai Gyro smiled faintly, cause you're too weak, there is a huge gap in our strength. No, but every time I feel like I'm about to catch up to you, you instantly level up again. What's going on? Naruto was puzzled. During this time, Rai Gyro also guided Naruto in Taijutsu and Chakra control. Naruto's talent was high, and even Rai Gyro was somewhat envious. After all, Naruto was the protagonist of this world. But Rai Gyro himself never slacked off. He surpassed his limits time and time again, breaking through the barriers each time. Rai Gyro's efforts were several times that of Naruto's, and besides, Raiji. Aro always concealed his strength when sparring with Naruto. After all, there are eyes watching them from the shadows. ANBU ninjas wearing cat-like masks have been watching Raijiro and Naruto. Naruto, as the Jinkraki of the Nine Tails, was very important for Kanaha, and Hiruzen had always been watching him. Chapter 6, Surprise Test Late at night, in the Hokage's office. Has Raijiro become friends with Naruto? Hiruzen pondered in his office. Perhaps it was because both Raijiro and Naruto had lost their parents at a young age that Raijiro had grown so close to Naruto. After all, he was just a child, there was no need to speculate so much about him. Sandame sama Naruto has never won against Raijiro in their sparring matches. I even feel like this kid is holding back his strength. An Anbu ninja respectfully stood before Hiruzen and spoke solemnly. Naruto's strength was inferior to Raijiro's? This didn't surprise Hiruzen too much. After all, Naruto had always been a laggard in school. Although he was a laggard, Naruto was a Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. So, Hiruzen did not underestimate Naruto because of his performance in school. I understand. Keep an eye on them. Yes, Sandame sama As the words fell, the Anbu ninja disappeared in an instant. Raijiro, a civilian background. Whether he's a genius or not remains to be seen. Now he urgently needed a civilian genius like Minato back in the day. Although he was the Hokage, he was getting old. The pressure brought by the Uchiha clan was becoming increasingly heavy. Despite the calm appearance of the village, there were hidden undercurrents. During this time, Raijiro had been immersed in his spiritual space, and everyone was more or less aware of Raijiro's relationship with Hinata. Compared to Raijiro, the most popular figure in the class was still Suzuki with only a few people paying attention to Raijiro. Every time Raijiro emerged from the spiritual world, Hinata never forgot to hand him a handkerchief. And now Naruto had become Raijiro's shadow, he was always following behind Raijiro. Compared to the original Hinata, the current Hinata was much more confident. Her strength was also rapidly increasing, and recently, she was stimulated by Raijiro in a sparring match, even unlocking her Byakugan powers. As Raijiro emerged from the spiritual world, he didn't feel too tired compared to before, just a bit absent-minded. Raijiro-kun. Hinata handed him a handkerchief. Raijiro smiled faintly, taking the handkerchief to wipe the sweat off his forehead. Character Template, Dracul My Hawk. Character Unlock Progress, 5%. It took two months, and although the progress was not significant, Raijiro had gained a lot of insights into swordsmanship, and his foundation in swordsmanship was extremely solid. And now, his chakra was even more abundant. Raijiro now possessed far greater strength compared to his peers. An average ninja might be killed in one move if they were careless against him. Even the current Suzuki might not be a match for Raijiro. All the students. Gather on the playground. Irika walked into the classroom and shouted. All the students got to the playground in confusion. It turned out to be a surprise test this time. Ninja Academy tested students' progress in their studies every once in a while. The test was divided into three categories, Teijutsu, Shurikenjutsu, and Clone Jutsu. First was Clone Jutsu, and the first to be tested was Suzuki, who walked up confidently and easily created three clones. Irika nodded in satisfaction. Uchiha Suzuki, pass. Indeed, he was from the Uchiha clan. Ah 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 ah. Suzuki-kun is so cool. Ino and Sakura both swooned. These two were Sasuke's biggest fans. Before this, the top student in the class had always been Suzuki. Being the top student meant being the student with the highest overall grades in the class. The only one who had always been below Suzuki was Niji. Next, Yamashinanatsu. 
Akimi Mai. Yamashita Yoko. After about a dozen people, it was finally Raijiro's turn. Next, Raijiro. Irika still had high expectations for Raijiro, after all, this kid had been working hard since he knew him. He even heard that this kid had already mastered the Shadow Clone Jutsu proficiently. If that was true, then the Clone Jutsu would be a piece of cake for Raijiro. Bang! With a loud noise, accompanied by smoke, five clones appeared beside Raijiro. Even Irika couldn't help but inhale sharply. Raijiro had actually created five clones at once. He had underestimated this kid. Raijiro. Excellent. Tisk. Suzuki snorted disdainfully. But he had indeed not expected that Raijiro could create five clones at once, which added a bit of pressure to Suzuki. Suzuki was just annoyed that another competitor for the top student position had emerged. And he was just a civilian. I can't lag behind a civilian like him. Next, Naruto. Naruto sniffled. Watch me, everyone. Clone Jutsu. Irika was also somewhat surprised to see Naruto's perfect clones. Naruto had always been a last student in the class, unable to even use the clone jutsu proficiently, but now he had successfully performed it. Everyone present was extremely surprised. This guy actually passed. How is this possible? Those who had mocked Naruto for being a loser could not perform the clone jutsu proficiently themselves. It was just because of Naruto's status that they could openly ridicule him as a laggard. The next test was Shurkenjutsu. In daily training, Raijiro's Shurkenjutsu was even more accurate than that of a jonin. Before this, Sasuke's score had always been the highest at 97. Suzuki picked up the Shuriken with a cool look. Uchiha Suzuki. 99 points. Ha. 99 points. All the Shuriken hit the target, with only one deviating slightly from the bullseye. As expected of Suzuki-kun, you're as strong as ever. It seems that Suzuki-kun is going to take first place again this time. The genius of the Uchiha clan is truly terrifying. Hearing the surrounding discussions, Suzuki looked proud and glanced at Raijiro. This guy shouldn't be able to surpass me, but he's just a civilian, even if he's amazing, he can't be better than me. Niji Haiga also scored 97 points. Next, Raijiro. Raijiro-kun. You can do it. Hinata cheered for Raijiro. Compared to the seriousness of the others, Raijiro seemed a bit lazy as he threw the shuriken casually. Idiot. How can you expect a good score when you throw shuriken so carelessly? Suzuki sneered disdainfully. But when Irika went to check the target, he suddenly froze, took a deep breath, and announced solemnly. Raijiro. Shuriken Jutsu, 100 points. Chapter 7, Raijiro vs. Suzuki. What? 100 points. How is that possible? Suzuki and Niji both wore expressions of disbelief, checking each target thoroughly. It's true. All of them hit dead center. This guy wasn't just throwing them randomly. Suzuki clenched his fists, unwilling to accept it, as he looked at Raijiro. The esteemed Uchiha air was actually weaker than a commoner in kunao throwing. Their classmates were all shocked, looking at Raijiro in disbelief. Could it be that Sasuke's position as the top student was about to change hands? It was too early to say that, as there was still the main test to come. Unlike the previous two tests, the sparring was a combat assessment, a true test of combat between the two sides. Suzuki looked at Raijiro. He must win against him in this fight, otherwise, he would feel unworthy of being an Uchiha. Seeing Sasuke's burning gaze, Raijiro couldn't help but smile. Just because he scored 100 points, Suzuki was feeling so challenged. The upcoming fight would also showcase his training results. With one hand resting on his wooden sword, Raijiro's eyes flashed with rare excitement. Even Naruto scored 84 points in kunao throwing, reaching an above average level. Irika was incredibly shocked by Naruto's progress. Was it because of this kid, Raijiro? It seemed like Naruto had made good friends. A faint smile tugged at Irika's lips. Many felt utterly dejected. Previously, with Naruto around, even if their scores were poor, they wouldn't end up at the bottom. But now that Naruto had reached an above-average level, they lost that sense of superiority. Let's begin the practical assessment. Who's up first? Irika scanned the crowd, and except for Suzuki, Niji, and Raijiro, everyone else took a step back. Obviously, they didn't want to confront strong opponents like Suzuki, Raijiro, and Niji. 
Suzuki stepped forward, his intense gaze fixed on Raijiro, as he spoke to Irika, Irika sensei, I challenge Raijiro. A head to head showdown right off the bat. Everyone was incredibly curious about Raijiro's strength and wondered if he could use shadow clones, making him comparable to Suzuki and Niji. A thick tension filled the air. Everyone looked at Raijiro, wondering if he would accept Sasuke's challenge. Raijiro, do you accept? Irika asked, with some concern in his heart, after all, Suzuki was from the Uchiha clan. Moreover, Suzuki had already mastered the Sirank Ninjutsu, Fire Style, Fireball Jutsu. Sasuke's strength was probably close to that of a genin now. I accept. Raijiro accepted straightforwardly. As for Suzuki and Raijiro, Raijiro's strength had always been a mystery, and what puzzled them even more was why Raijiro had a wooden sword at his waist. A wooden sword had no killing power for a ninja. Are you ready? Irika asked solemnly. Both Raijiro and Suzuki nodded without any objections. Then, let's start by forming the seal of confrontation. Raijiro and Suzuki formed the seal facing each other. Irika glanced at both of them. Start. As soon as the word fell, Suzuki dove towards Raijiro without hesitation, feinting an attack towards Raijiro's upper body, but his real target was Raijiro's lower body. Raijiro remained calm, having already seen through Sasuke's small trick. Suzuki threw a punch, a smirk playing on his lips. He got him. Boom. But in the next moment, Suzuki froze. The Raijiro in front of him turned into a wooden stump, and at that moment, a wooden sword was pressed against Sasuke's neck. Sasuke's eyes widened, a look of disbelief crossing his face, as if he had seen a ghost. Substitution Jutsu. Irika exclaimed in astonishment. Could it be that Raijiro had already mastered the substitution jutsu so proficiently? Raijiro's parents were former ninjas, and he had mastered some of the basic ninjutsu from the few remaining ninja scrolls. The substitution jutsu was just the most basic ninjutsu, and from the very beginning, Raijiro's goal in training was to master it proficiently. Suzuki lowered his head in disappointment. I lost. Silence fell over the surroundings, everyone looked at Raijiro their mouths agape, their eyes filled with shock. Was it over just like that? Has Raijiro already mastered all the basic ninjutsu, including the substitution jutsu? They even suspected whether Raijiro had come to the ninja school just to challenge them. Even the usually indifferent Shikamaru stared wide-eyed at Raijiro. The fight is over. Raijiro wins. Both of you, perform seal of reconciliation and make peace. Suzuki lowered his head and made the seal with Raijiro in peace then returned to the crowd dejectedly. Suzuki had always been the top student, but now Raijiro, who suddenly appeared, shattered his pride as a member of the Uchiha clan. As the son of the Uchiha clan leader, he actually lost to a commoner. Wow! He actually defeated Suzuki so easily. It's the first time I've seen Suzuki beaten. So amazing! It ended in just a moment. Is Raijiro really the same age as us? He's a true genius. Raijiro's quick victory elicited exclamations from everyone, their faces filled with admiration as they looked at him. Raijiro-kun. Hinata, who had been standing on the sidelines, handed Raijiro a water glass. Raijiro looked at Hinata, then placed a hand on her head. Thank you, Hinata. Instantly, Hinata froze, her entire body stiffening, her face turning red as she involuntarily lowered her head. Seeing the shy Hinata, Raijiro smiled faintly. As for Niji, who was watching from the side, he couldn't help but feel resentful as he looked at Raijiro and Hinata. Niji hadn't expected Raijiro to defeat Suzuki so quickly. Raijiro, who could proficiently use the substitution jutsu, already stood at a different level from them. Moreover, Niji had observed Raijiro's chakra movements during the match. Raijiro had even concealed his true strength in this match. He was simply no match for Raijiro. And after interacting with Hinata, Hinata's personality had also changed. As the talented member of the Hyaga clan, Hinata's talents were gradually being revealed. Hinata possessed talents that were not inferior to Niji's. It wouldn't be long before even Hinata would surpass him. Was the fate of the branch family always predetermined? In the subsequent practical tests, although Naruto lost to Shikamaru, Shikamaru didn't win easily. If it weren't for the Shadow Bind Jutsu, perhaps Shikamaru would have lost to Naruto. It's hard to imagine that Naruto, who used to be the class's bottom, had progressed so quickly. Chapter 8, 
Danzo's surveillance. Uchiha clan. Suzuki was alone in his room, still reeling from the blow dealt by his loss to Raijiro, leaving him unable to accept it. At that moment, Itaka happened to return. Hearing his mother mention Sasuke's unusual behavior today, Itaka pushed the door open and entered. Seeing Suzuki, who was different from usual, Itaka asked with concern, What's wrong, Suzuki? Brother, I lost today. Itaka's expression changed slightly, looking at Suzuki in astonishment. Itaka knew about Sasuke's talent. Although it was somewhat inferior to his own during his younger days, in today's Kanaha, Suzuki was still a remarkable genius. Before this, Suzuki had never lost to anyone. Was it that kid from the Hyaga clan? Although Itaki often teased Suzuki, he had always been keeping an eye on Sasuke's school life. Suzuki shook his head. It wasn't Niji Hyaga. It was a commoner. A commoner. Even Itaki was stunned to hear this. Who was it? Raijiro. Itaka's expression changed once again. That little guy. He didn't expect his strength to surpass Sasuke's. He truly deserved the recommendation from the third Hokage. Was the third Hokage trying to grow another civilian hero like the fourth Hokage? The fourth Hokage was a legendary figure who fell while protecting Kanaha. It's worth noting that at that time, the fourth Hokage was still very young. After the end of the Nine Tails attack, the major clans of Kanaha mourned for the fourth Hokage's death. Because of the fourth Hokage's fall, the elderly third Hokage had to continue sitting in the position of the Hokage. Although Kanaha was still the leading village in the ninja world, the internal problems accumulating in Kanaha could lead to significant changes if they were to erupt. He had to make a decision. After some time, the renowned Shunshin no Shisui fell, and the higher UPS of Kanaha remained silent about Shisui's death. How Shisui died was something Itaka knew very well. Shisui, as his only good friend, jumped off a cliff in front of him, triggering Itaka's activation of the Mangekyo Sharingan. Shisui's death. The Uchiha clan's extermination may not be far off. Under the waterfall, Raijiro couldn't help but sigh. Kanaha was gradually weakening. After the Uchiha clan would be destroyed, Kanaha would surely lose its title of the strongest village in the shinobi world. He needed to train even harder. Five months later, Raijiro appeared more mature with his light skin and flowing hair. The wooden sword at Raijiro's waist had been replaced by the renowned sword Aim no Habakari, one of the 21 great great swords. Character Template, Dracul My Hawk. Character Unlock Progress, 12.1%. Aim no Habakari was the reward given by the system when Raijiro reached 10% progress. Not only that, the My Hawk in Raijiro's spiritual space had also undergone changes. Now, he possessed the ability to hear the breath of all things. However, he had not yet reached the level of a swordsman. Currently, although Raijiro could cut through anything, he couldn't execute the flying slash attack no matter how hard he tried. On the other hand, the Maihawk in his spiritual space could freely execute the flying slash attack. At present, Raijiro was no match for the Maihawk in his spiritual space. The arrogance is okay would undergo a significant change soon. In less than a year. Dan so. That guy had noticed him. With Raijiro's perception now, he could sense the root ninja lurking nearby, watching him. It seemed he had to accelerate his improvement and enter the realm of swordsmen as soon as possible. Raijiro, I'm here. Naruto dashed out of the forest. Naruto's strength now far exceeded that of the original anime. Naruto and Raijiro's relationship was getting better and better, and Naruto almost regarded Raijiro as his brother. But if he influenced him too much would the incident of Naruto stealing the Forbidden Scroll still happen? If not, would Naruto's signature move Multiple Shadow Clone Jutsu still appear? After all, the Multiple Shadow Clone Jutsu was a Forbidden Jutsu, and only someone with the bloodline of the Uzumaki clan and the Chakra of the Nine Tails could create so many clones. Raijiro still vividly remembered the exhilarating feeling when he saw Naruto use the Shadow Clone Jutsu for the first time in the series. Raijiro can you teach me the jutsu you used last time? Naruto's eyes showed a strange light. The Rays Nan. Although changing the original story might attract the attention of the third Hokage and Danzo, but he didn't want to just follow the plot, he wanted to see what changes he would bring to this world. Yet. Yeah. Raijiro nodded. Awesome. If I become Hokage in the future, you'll be my most important shinobi. With a loud thud, Raijiro's fist landed on Naruto's forehead. Ouch. That hurts. You brat, you've been too arrogant lately. 
Raijiro scolded angrily. You're a violent maniac. Naruto grumbled while holding his head. Pay attention, I'll only show you once. I'll tell you the principles, but whether you can succeed or not depends on your own efforts. Raijiro said sternly. Raise Nan. A blue chakra sphere gathered in Raijiro's hand. Raijiro released it towards the ground. With a loud rumble, the ground trembled, and dust covered the surroundings. When the dust cleared, Naruto stared wide-eyed at the deep pit on the ground. Wow, such power! Naruto exclaimed in awe. This is the jutsu I'm going to teach you, the Reis Nan. The Reis Nan is an A-rank ninjutsu. Whether you can learn it or not depends on you. The ninja of the Anvu were in chaos for a moment. Why does that kid know the Reis Nan? Could it be Jiraiya-sama? No, I must report this information to Danzo-sama as soon as possible. After the root ninja left, Raijiro glanced at the previous location of the root ninja. They've already left. He wondered what Danzo's reaction would be. After all, a student who was still in the ninja academy suddenly using an A-rank ninjutsu would be enough to attract the attention of Kanaha's higher UPS. Moreover, Jiraiya hadn't returned to Kanaha for a long time. In their knowledge, only the late fourth Hokage and the legendary Sunan, Jiraiya, who was known as the Toad Sage, could use the Rei's Nan. Chapter 9, I'll Come Looking for You Again Danzo, you've been going too far lately. Hiruzen looked grimly at Danzo in front of him. Hiruzen, you should know that kid is a genius but also a lunatic. Let him join Root. Root is where he belongs. That's impossible. Hiruzen's expression turned extremely ugly. Do you want to burden that child with the darkness of Kanaha at such a young age? It's precisely because he's a genius that Root is the most suitable place for him. Hiruzen, you already had Minato. Do you want this boy too? Danzo didn't continue, but the implication was clear. Hiruzen fell into silence without giving an answer for a moment. Then, after a while, he spoke up, I won't let that child join Root. You'd better give up on that idea. Humph. Danzo snorted coldly and left the Hokage's office. Hiruzen returned to his seat, rubbing his forehead. Another genius like Minato. He couldn't let someone like that fall into Danzo's hands. He was getting old, and he wouldn't sit in the position of Hokage for much longer. Moreover, Hiruzen had a bad feeling, as if there was a hidden hand manipulating and influencing the shinobi world. Looking at the documents on his desk, a hint of coldness appeared in Hiruzen's eyes, which had seen many vicissitudes. The Uchiha clan had been getting increasingly restless lately. Dash. Since Raijiro enrolled, Suzuki, who used to shine as the pride of the Uchiha clan, had dimmed considerably in comparison to Raijiro's radiance. By now, Raijiro had truly become the undisputed top student, a prominent figure within the academy. However, Raijiro no longer attended ninja classes. Those at the ninja academy were merely clones of Raijiro. He had no interest in such a curriculum. And over the past six months, Raijiro's swordsmanship had improved significantly, but although his progress was steady, he still hadn't reached the level of a true swordsman. It seemed Raijiro was stuck into a strange cycle of bottlenecks. Character Template, Dracul My Hawk Character Unlock Progress, 18.5% Though Raijiro was no longer tormented by the hawk-eyed figure in his mental space, he still was no match for him. Suddenly, at this moment, Raijiro's eyes changed, his whole body tensing up. He looked alertly at a certain spot. The next moment. As Raijiro drew his sword, an attack shot out and struck a tree trunk, leaving a mark. This wasn't a flying slash attack. A true swordsman could easily cleave a tree with that technique. Who's there? Hee <laughs> hee, interesting little guy. Even an average jonin might not be able to detect me. Your power just now didn't seem like chakra. A man with a pale face, black long hair, and an aura of coldness and malice emerged. His eyes were like those of a venomous snake. Raijiro's eyes couldn't help but contract, an unprecedented sense of danger enveloping him. Orochimaru. How could he appear in Kanaha at this time? The presence of root ninjas had disappeared. It seemed Orochimaru had dealt with them already. And currently, Raijiro is still no match for Orochimaru. Orochimaru. Raijiro watched Orochimaru warily, murmuring softly. A hint of curiosity flashed in Orochimaru's eyes as he looked at Raijiro. It seems you know me. You're one of the legendary Sunan, a renowned rogue ninja in the village. How could I not know you? 
Raijiro kept his hand on his sword. Orochimaru was a twisted scientist, he didn't want to fall into Orochimaru's hands. Orochimaru's expression changed, and the next moment, his figure disappeared, appearing in front of Raijiro. He reached out to grab Raijiro, but found himself grasping at thin air. Orochimaru once again looked towards Raijiro. Amazing reaction speed. Orochimaru stretched out his long tongue and licked the blood from his arm. The curious look in his eyes became more intense. He thought, not only did this boy got aware of my movements, but he also had time to do damage to me while avoiding me. This kid. Marvelous. Orochimaru looked even more excited, looking at Raijiro as if he wanted to swallow him completely. Because of this Raijiro felt unprecedented pressure coming from Orochimaru, cold sweat broke out from his forehead. Damn it. The fight actually turns on this guy. But the next second, Orochimaru's expression changed again, he squinted at another spot in the forest, sensing someone approaching rapidly, and their strength seemed extraordinary. It seems today's encounter ends here. Kid, I'll come find you another day. With those words, Orochimaru's figure also disappeared. After Itaki arrived, he glanced around. Is he gone? Raijiro was also surprised by Itaki's arrival, understanding now why Orochimaru had left. Why did Itaki come here? Raijiro didn't think it was the third Hokage who sent Itaki to protect him. Although he had outstanding achievements in the Ninja Academy, Itaki wasn't someone the third Hokage would casually deploy to fight someone like Orochimaru. Who did you just see? Itaki spoke coldly. Orochimaru. Itaka's expression changed slightly. No wonder he had sensed a chilling presence, it indeed matched Orochimaru. He knew this was matter beyond his authority, so he had to inform Third Hokage about it, but before that Itaka wanted to talk about something else with Raijiro. Then, Itaka carefully scrutinized Raijiro. I heard my brother has been losing to you. Yet. Raijiro coughed twice. But at this moment, Itaka had already taken out the shuriken. Damn. Is this the cold Itaki I know? Is he really here to fight me because of Suzuki? Don't misunderstand. Suzuki asked me to test your strength. He wants to know the gap between himself and you. Itaka said indifferently. Raijiro's face darkened as he cursed inwardly. That bastard Suzuki was clearly setting me up. Even if I'm strong, I'm still just a punching bag in front of Itaki, who had already unlocked the Manjikyo Sharingan and had become a true cage-level powerhouse. But Raijiro didn't feel even the slightest fear. Instead, he felt excited. Being able to spar with Itaka would help him understand his own strength better. Chapter 10, Flying Slash Interesting. He is actually excited. Just as the third Hokage said, this kid is a lunatic. Suzuki, the difference between you and him is that you are not crazy enough. Itaka thought after seeing Raijiro. It seems you are ready. So. Before he could finish his sentence, Itaka's figure had already disappeared. Raijiro was well aware that it was impossible for him to defeat Itaka head-on with his current strength. The gap between himself and a shinobi of the cage level was huge, but even so, Raijiro hoped to unleash his full potential. Even if there was only a slight chance of defeating Itaka, he was unwilling to give up. Two figures intertwined in battle. Clang! Two sparks burst forth and Itaka's expression turned serious as he looked at the piece of kunao shaved off in his hand. What kind of sword was that? It could even shave off kunao. Moreover, this kid's swordsmanship had reached a terrifying level. Although it was not enough to pose a threat to him, just from this initial probing, Itaka felt that even a jonin might not be able to match Raijiro at the moment. The ground was marked with sketches. Although the incomplete flying slashes did not have the power of an A-rank ninjutsu, it was enough to give Itaka some trouble. Figures darted around. Substitution Jutsu. Body Flicker Jutsu. Shadow Clone Jutsu. While diligently practicing swordsmanship, Raijiro didn't forget his identity as a shinobi. He had learned most of these jutsu from the scrolls his parents had left in the house. So you've mastered the Shadow Clone Jutsu as well. Truly a genius. Itaka sighed inwardly. The gap between Suzuki and Raijiro was too great. Was this kid really just a civilian? If Itaka had witnessed Raijiro's training, perhaps he wouldn't think so. As the figures darted around and the river surged, influenced by Raijiro's swordsmanship, a straight cut mark appeared on the river due to the impact. Not enough. Not enough. Sweat dripped from Raijiro's forehead. By now, 
he was soaked through, but facing Itakas, Ryajiro found himself increasingly enjoying the feeling of this battle. At this moment, it seemed like he had grasped something, and he swung his sword, aim no habakari, down. Whoosh! A dark red light flashed, and the dazzling flying slash pierced through the sky. A fierce shockwave swept around, and the ground cracked for tens of meters where the flying slash landed. At this moment, Itaka finally felt a sense of crisis. Fire style. Great fireball jutsu. Tear. The flying slash was a pure slash, not an ninjutsu formed from chakra, and while the great fireball jutsu was terrifying, it was split in half under the impact of the flying slash. With a rumble, a huge wave surged like a Category 8 hurricane, shaking the surrounding area, and the ground and trees trembled. The moment the slash touched the ground, a deep crater appeared on the ground. Thick smoke covered the surroundings in an instant. Itaki, who had escaped using the substitution jutsu, looked at the destruction on the ground in shock, unable to calm down for a long time. What was that just now? Ninjutsu. But the attack just now didn't seem to have chakra properties. If I hadn't dodged. Itaka's gaze towards Raijiro became more solemn. If he remembered correctly, Raijiro was only eight years old at the time. Seeing him he remembered Kakashi, who graduated early from the Ninja Academy, only became a jonin at the age of twelve. But to think the strength of this boy was comparable to a jonin was simply unimaginable, especially the slashing technique that puzzled Itaki. What was the light that flew out? Ha! Huh. Raijiro gasped for breath, collapsing weakly on the ground. At this point, he had completely depleted his strength. He succeeded. In battling with Itaki, a cage-level shinobi, he had successfully crossed into the realm of sword mastery and unleashed the flying slash. What a strange guy! Itaka looked at the collapsed Raijiro on the ground and couldn't help but murmur. The next moment, his figure disappeared. Meanwhile after a while someone arrived at the scene, it was Hinata. As Hinata rushed over, seeing Raijiro collapsed on the ground and the terrifying craters on the ground, she shouted anxiously, Raijiro-kun. Hinata helped Raijiro up. Looking at Hinata in front of him with exhaustion, Raijiro still smiled. It's you, Hinata. Raijiro-kun, are you okay? What happened here? Hinata looked at Raijiro, whose face was full of exhaustion and dust feeling extremely distressed, her eyes becoming somewhat moist. Why are you crying? I'm fine. I just had a fight with someone and got a bit tired. Hinata, could you please help me get up? Hinata wiped away the tears from the corners of her eyes and softly replied, yes. With Hinata's support, Raijiro walked out of the woods step by step, and their bond quickly warmed as a result. Dash. What? You're saying that Raijiro's strength is already comparable to that of a jonin. Hiruzen exclaimed in shock, his eyes revealing astonishment. Itaka nodded. Ha! Huh. Hiruzen took a deep breath, finding it hard to calm down internally. Eight years old. Raijiro was only eight years old. Kakashi didn't become a jonin until he was twelve, although becoming a jonin and reaching the strength of a jonin were different matters. But having jonin level strength at the age of seven was unheard of. At this moment, Danzo entered the room. Hiruzen, leave Raijiro to me. I will definitely nurture him into the most outstanding shinobi. Hiruzen looked at Danzo coldly. I won't hand him over to you and let him become a ruthless killing machine, Danzo. Don't even think about it, Danzo. I won't let that happen. Hiruzen's tone was firm. Why don't you understand, Saratobi? Enough. Hiruzen rebuked, my decision will be final after all. I am the Hokage. Danzo looked at Hiruzen with a grim expression, then left the Hokage's office. Itaki, who had remained silent on the side, had nothing to do with the affair between the Hokage and Danzo, but he did have something to report to Hiruzen. Hokage-sama, recently there has been increasing dissatisfaction within the clan. Father also spoke to me about it yesterday. Itaka spoke slowly. Listening to Itaka's words, Hiruzen felt even more headache. One thing after another. Couldn't that guy Danzo be a bit more peaceful? Right now, the matter concerning the Uchiha clan was more important. Itaki, I leave the Uchiha clan's matter to you. With Shisui gone, you are the only one who can persuade the Uchiha clan. Hiruzen emphasized. Hokage-sama, I will do my best. Good. After saying that, Hiruzen watched Itaka's departing figure, sinking back into deep thought. Chapter 11, Haki 
stepping into the new level, Ryajiro received two rewards. They were the Observation Haki and Armament Haki. My Hawk had once said that any sword in the world could become a black blade as long as Armament Haki was used with it, creating black slashes. Although Ryajiro had stepped into the realm of sword mastery, he was only a beginner swordsman. Becoming a true master swordsman was impossible for the time being. It would be better to focus on mastering armament and observation hacky for now. By focusing on hacky training, once Ryajiro mastered observation hacky, his perception would surpass that of Leaf Village's sensory ninja. The semester at the ninja school had ended. At this moment, Ryajiro, Naruto, and Hinata had become inseparable companions. Naruto now seemed very interested in Sakura, but he was no longer a loser. Sakura wasn't worthy of him. Hinata, Naruto, shall we have a spar? Ryajiro suggested. Do you mean a real fight? Naruto asked eagerly. Yeah. Ryajiro nodded. Naruto clenched his fists excitedly. Great. I've been wanting to spar with you for a long time. I'm sure my strength is not weaker than yours, now. Ryajiro glanced at Naruto somewhat helplessly. What gave you the courage to say such things? Naruto had indeed made great progress and could now compete evenly with Suzuki in tests. The Uchiha clan genius, since being defeated by Ryajiro, had been dealt another blow by Naruto, shattering his young heart. Now even Suzuki doubted whether he was truly a genius. Even Niji now acknowledged Hinata's strength. In their recent sparring match, Niji was no match for Hinata at all. After a moment of hesitation, Niji said to Hinata, Hinata-sama, from now onwards, I will fight with your boyfriend, he is the person I want to defeat the most. Hinata's face turned red, and she shyly lowered her head. Boyfriend, what, this is too embarrassing, she murmured. All right, Naruto, listen to me. What I meant by spar is you two against me. Hey. Both Naruto and Hinata were stunned. Ryajiro, you're underestimating us. If Hinata and I teamed up against you, it would be difficult for you to handle us, Naruto argued. Ryajiro, isn't this a bit too much? Hinata added. Ryajiro shook his head. His strength was now almost on par with a jonin. While Naruto and Hinata were skilled, they still lacked something compared to him. It's fine. Just go all out, but be cautious, Ryajiro said. He unsheathed his sword, aim no habakari. To spar with Naruto and Hinata, he needed to be careful not to hurt them, so he decided to use the back of the blade. Now that Ryajiro is serious, I won't hold back. Naruto exclaimed excitedly and charged forward. Wow, that's heavy. Naruto's expression changed as the sword clashed with his kunao, creating sparks. Hinata, who had been hesitating, became determined and rushed towards Ryajiro. Clang! Clang! Ryajiro flicked his sword and Naruto's kunao flew out of his hand. Ryajiro is a monster. His strength is incredible. His strength was simply monstrous. Hinata, let's get serious, Naruto said, panting. In that case, I'll put in more effort too. Hinata began her assault, and Ryajiro decided to match her intensity. Two palms, four palms, eight palms, sixteen palms. Accompanied by strong gusts of wind, waves of force swept through the area. But Hinata's expression changed more and more. It felt like she was pushing against a mountain. Why is this happening? It seemed like Ryajiro knew exactly where her attacks were going. Every time she struck, he could anticipate her moves. Meanwhile, Naruto had produced several shuriken and hurled them at Ryajiro. Clang! 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 Ryajiro swung his sword, deflecting the shuriken with sparks flying. Naruto, Hinata, be careful! Ryajiro warned as armament Haki coated his blade, turning his sword into a black color shimmering with an eerie light. With a swing of his sword. Boom. A terrifying black slash soared forth, affecting the surrounding terrain. As the slash spread, everything around was engulfed in darkness, turning into dust. A terrible sword mark appeared straight ahead. What's that? Naruto exclaimed in horror. The unmatched might was terrifying, like a fierce beast charging instilling unprecedented fear. Faced with such terrifying power, Naruto couldn't even stand up. The slash swept towards Naruto and Hinata, and they could only dodge, unable to confront it. However, while dodging, Naruto and Hinata gave Ryajiro an opportunity. Ryajiro appeared in front of them. Naruto was sent flying, 
while Hinata's neck was merely pressed against by the scabbard. Naruto crawled out of the bushes in a sorry state, yelling, Raijiro, you're too biased. Why did you only kick me? This is for your own growth, Raijiro replied calmly. Naruto felt like saying something inappropriate, but all he managed was, what growth? You just don't want to hurt Hinata. Raijiro kun. Hinata, being embraced by Raijiro, murmured shyly. But Raijiro hugged her tighter, making her face turn red. Naruto turned away, avoiding the scene. After a while, the atmosphere gradually eased, and Naruto asked, Raijiro, what was that dark slash earlier? That power was even more terrifying than an A-rank ninjutsu. Naruto pointed to the ground markings and the flattened trees. It was like someone had slashed the ground. That was my sword slash. Slash? What's that? Is it a ninjutsu? But I didn't sense any chakra in that attack. As Raijiro was about to explain, he suddenly remembered that a slash was not a power recognized by ninjas of this world. Even if he explained it, Naruto might not understand with his intelligence. Forget it, you wouldn't understand even if I told you. Naruto immediately became unhappy. What do you mean, Raijiro? Do you think I'm that dumb? Yes. Raijiro said mercilessly. Chapter 12, Meeting Hayashi Naruto Unable to win the argument and feeling frustrated, Naruto could only sulk on his own. Time passed quickly, and before they knew it, it was almost time to return to school. Meanwhile, at the Hayaga household, Hayashi calmly sipped his tea while casting a faint glance at Raijiro seated across from him. Outside the door, Hinata was feeling restless and anxious. She had suddenly received news that her father wanted to see Raijiro. Could it be because of their frequent interactions? Don't worry, sister. Father won't make things difficult for your boyfriend, reassured the petite and lovely Hanabi. Hinata blushed shyly at her sister's words, her face turning red. Don't talk nonsense, Hanabi. Me and Raijiro. Hinata's voice trailed off, growing quieter as she spoke. Hanabi knew her sister's personality well. Though Hinata used to be timid, she had changed significantly since meeting Raijiro. In this world, as women mature early. Even though Hanabi was aware of Hinata's relationship with Raijiro, she didn't say much about it. It's because of you that my daughter has changed so much, Hayashi said with a hint of severity in his eyes, exerting the aura of a high-ranking ninja. However, even facing such a high-ranking ninja, Raijiro was confident enough to believe he could defeat Hayashi. So, when talking to him, Raijiro remained unchanged. She chose to change herself, not because of me, Raijiro said calmly, meeting Hayashi's gaze. A hint of surprise flashed in Hayashi's eyes, as he began to regard Raijiro with even more respect. Could a kid have such composure and attitude? He had witnessed Hinata's personality changing day by day, and he had once considered giving up on her. Before meeting Raijiro, Hinata couldn't even defeat her sister Hanabi, let alone Niji. If it weren't for Niji being from a branch family, Hayashi would have considered focusing more on his training. But as time passed, Hayashi noticed a change in his daughter. She became stronger, shedding her previous weakness visibly. Almost every day, Hayashi watched Hinata train diligently in the family dojo, and her strength grew rapidly. During a real battle with Niji, he witnessed Hinata completely overpowering him, leaving him defenseless. This made Hayashi curious. What had caused such a huge change in his once timid daughter? Upon investigation, Hayashi discovered that his daughter had been in close contact with a civilian student at school, and what surprised him even more was that this civilian student turned out to be a prodigy. He had defeated Suzuki and even Niji. When he learned that Raijiro's strength was already comparable to that of a jonin, Hayashi was stunned for a long time before regaining his composure. A jonin at the age of eight, a genius even surpassing Kakashi? And Raijiro's specialty was not ninjutsu but swordsmanship. Was Kanaha about to produce another figure like Kakashi's father? After careful consideration, Hayashi wanted to meet this extraordinary young man. Upon seeing Raijiro for the first time, Hayashi couldn't help but feel that he was unusually mature. After conversing for about half an hour, Hayashi looked at Raijiro seriously and said, I don't oppose you being with Hinata, but take care of her, because she is my daughter. Raijiro lowered his eyes and sipped his tea, his dark green eyes exuding allure. As long as I'm here, Hinata won't suffer any harm, Raijiro said earnestly, putting Hayashi's mind at ease. As the door opened, Hinata and Hanabi, 
who had been eavesdropping, lost their balance and fell to the ground. Especially Hinata, when she looked up at the tall figure of Raijiro, blushed deeply. The embarrassed Hinata hurriedly ran back to her room. Well, then, I'll take my leave, Hayagasama. M.M. Watching Raijiro's figure recede, Hayashi couldn't help but sigh. Having the strength of Jonin at the age of eight. Did the third Hokage want to groom this kid to be the Hokage? However, Raijiro had no interest in becoming Hokage. He just wanted to become stronger, continuously stronger. What's the use of being Hokage? During the Fourth Great Ninja War, the so-called Hokage were powerless against Uchihamadara, let alone the other members of the Akatsuki. And in the later battles against Kagaya Atsutsuki, they seemed insignificant. Moreover, Raijiro didn't feel any sense of belonging to Kanaha itself. If Kanaha's dark hands reached out to him, he wouldn't care about the village. Even if he became a rough ninja, so what? Only strength mattered. Right now, the primary goal was to raise the progress of the Myhawk template to 100% and unlock the second character template. Even in his prime, Myhawk's strength was at most comparable to a high-level cage. But if he wanted to confront monsters like Atsutsuki, he was still weak. Before unlocking the second template, if he had the chance to meet Jiraiya, he would ask him about Sage Mode and Senjutsu Chakra. With Sage Mode, even without unlocking his second template, his strength could be greatly increased. Right now, he was only at the beginning of his journey, and those monstrous beings were unlikely to appear. The cages are still an absolute powerhouse at this stage. Raijiro's figure appeared on the village road, and at that moment, a voice called out to him. With his trademark short sleeves and unique black spiky hair. It's Suzuki. A smile appeared on Raijiro's face, but he also felt a little surprised. Is what my brother said true? Has your strength really reached the level of Jonin? Suzuki looked at Raijiro with unwillingness in his eyes, feeling a bit bitter. As a member of the Uchiha clan, he was proud of his identity. The Uchiha clan had produced many geniuses Uchiha Madara, Uchiha Shisui, his brother. And before Raijiro entered school, he was also a genius of the Uchiha clan. But since Raijiro entered school, his brilliance as a genius had been gradually overshadowed. After losing to Raijiro, Sasuke's pride suffered an unprecedented blow. Well, perhaps I was no match for Itaka last time, but now I have the power to fight him, Raijiro said calmly, causing Sasuke's eyes to shrink suddenly. How is that possible? Chapter 13, The Gap Between You and Me Raijiro was only seven years old. And compared to Raijiro, Suzuki was still weaker than him in every aspect. Raijiro, fight with me, Suzuki said. Why? Raijiro asked. I want to know the difference between us, Suzuki replied. Raijiro sighed helplessly. Suzuki was clearly looking for trouble. Raijiro led Suzuki to the forest where he often trained. Why is this place like this? Suzuki asked, looking at the deep crater ground and the dense forest cut by sharp weapons, his face filled with shock. Look, Suzuki, Raijiro said. This is the difference between you and me. With that, Raijiro drew his sword, and struck a simple yet powerful slash. Suzuki hadn't even realized what was happening. A dazzling dark red sword aura, like a tsunami engulfing everything, swept through, overturning everything in its path. Boom! The sword aura surged, overwhelming everything in its path. The terrifying force shattered the earth. The endless land trembled because of this dark red sword aura, and the vibrations in the forest startled countless birds. The terrifying force submerged everything, leaving behind a deep trench ten of meters deep on the ground, like a torn wound. As the dust settled and the mist dispersed, Suzuki widened his eyes in horror, staring at the split ground before him. Suzuki was completely stunned. Do you understand now? This is the difference of strength between you and me. There's no need for a fight, Raijiro said calmly. I have things to attend to. Goodbye. With a farewell, Raijiro left Suzuki, who was still bewildered. Suzuki collapsed to the ground, trembling uncontrollably. Is this a joke? How could he have such power? Is that ninjutsu? A rank, or S rank? The gap between him and me is so huge. Can I ever catch up to him? Clutching his fists in frustration, Suzuki couldn't accept always lagging behind Raijiro. But when he saw the deep carvings on the ground, he felt even more hopeless and powerless. The gap was too enormous. Dash. 
In the following days at the Ninja Academy, Raijiro continued to send his shadow clones to attend classes. Each clone alone was strong enough to compete with low-level Jonin. The difference in strength was only because the clones didn't have a sword. If the shadow clones also wielded swords, they might even be able to take on Jonin. Character Template, Dracul My Hawk Character Unlock Progress, 35.5% Now Rai Gyro had successfully mastered the essence of the swordsman. Although his armament hacky and observation hacky had not yet reached their peak, his armament hacky was enough to cover his upper body. Training hacky was simple, Rai Gyro pushed it to its limits time and time again, constantly surpassing himself. Only by doing so could he rapidly improve his hacky. In his mental space, My Hawk had transformed into his version. He wore a black tricorn hat adorned with white fur, and a wine-red patterned shirt. A small cross-shaped knife hung from his chest, and Rai Gyro vividly remembered My Hawk's quirky expression when he took out the knife. The strongest swordsman in the world. In his mental space, Rai Gyro felt a heavy pressure. Indeed, the pressure of being the strongest swordsman was like a mountain pressing down on him. However, Rai Gyro had an idea, one he had never considered before. Could his mental self use ninjutsu and shadow clone jutsu? Rai Gyro had never attempted such a thing before. It seemed that Chakra still existed. Let's give it a try. Rai Gyro formed hand seals. Boom. Another figure appeared beside him, and Rai Gyro's expression changed. Just creating a shadow clone hugely depleted his chakra, showing that there were still limitations in the mental space. But even creating one shadow clone was enough. Strongest swordsman. Let me test my skills. Clang. My hawk's sharp eyes showed no emotion. Accompanied by a sword cry, a green sword aura, dozens of meters high, swept towards Rai Gyro like a fierce storm. Damn. Feeling the intense danger, Rai Gyro knew that the gap between him and My Hawk of this era was huge. Rai Gyro dodged the green sword aura, while his shadow clone searched for an opportunity. Seizing the moment when My Hawk was vulnerable, a red black sword aura surged forth. Clang! With a casual raise of his hand, My Hawk easily deflected the sword aura from Rai Gyro's shadow clone, causing it to explode above them. In the Haiga family's dojo, Hayashi watched as Rai Gyro, holding his sword, emitted a terrifying aura. What on earth is this kid doing? He's just standing there with his eyes closed holding a sword, but why does his aura fluctuate like that? Especially at that moment, Hayashi even felt a sense of threat. Father. Hinata called out, then looked at Rai Gyro and said, Rai Gyro is training again. Training. Is this what he does for training? Hayashi couldn't help but ask in confusion. Yes, father. Rai Gyro's training has always been like this. Besides sparring with us, he spends more time contemplating swordsmanship in his own world. Isn't this meditation? Hinata shook her head. I used to think so too, but every time Rai Gyro enters this state, his strength increases significantly. This is a secret of Rai Gyro's strength. A secret? Hayashi furrowed his brow in contemplation. Could there be a bloodline limit that helps in his training? But Rai Gyro is just a commoner. His parents, both Jonin had no such bloodlines. This kid is indeed extraordinary. Will his swordsmanship bring about a new white fang that will terrify other ninja villages? In the mental space, Rai Gyro only saw a flash of sword light, and he returned from the mental space to reality. Rai Gyro gasped for breath, sweat covering his forehead as he knelt on one knee. Was his stamina depleted to such an extent? Hayashi was surprised, indeed, as Hinata had said. Meditation definitely wouldn't cause Rai Gyro's chakra to plummet so suddenly. And he looked so exhausted. Truly the world's greatest swordsman. Even though Rai Gyro used the same techniques, he could still be easily countered by My Hawk. Rai Gyro wasn't just learning My Hawk's techniques without purpose, he also combined ninjutsu to create new sword techniques. The power of the strongest swordsman's sword aura was dozens of times stronger than his own. Just one strike was equivalent, no more than the power of an s rank ninjutsu which was thrilling to think about. Chapter 14, Slicing Off Mountain The day before the start of school, Rai Gyro woke up to sudden news the next morning. That news was about Naruto stealing the scroll of seals. This made Rai Gyro somewhat silent. Has history not been altered? Or was there a force manipulating this world, perhaps him? The Sage of Six Paths The legendary ancestor of ninjas, the founder of Ninchu. 
Although the Sage of Six Paths no longer walked the earth, he continued to watch over the ninja world from the afterlife. As a legendary figure, Ryajiro didn't want to draw the attention of this old geezer. After all, his own strength was limited now. Even if he fully unlocked the Template of Myhawk, his strength couldn't compare to Hago Romo. Just his planetary devastation was enough to give Ryajiro a headache. At this moment, Ryajiro had arrived at Naruto's doorstep. He knocked. Naruto, still groggy from sleep, opened the door and was momentarily stunned by Ryajiro's presence. Ryajiro, what brings you here? Naruto asked in surprise. Ryajiro swiftly entered Naruto's room, followed by a series of Naruto's pained cries echoing from inside. After a while, Naruto had three large bumps on his head. He covered his head and yelled indignantly, Ryajiro, why did you hit me? Why did you steal the scroll? Naruto's expression instantly stiffened, then he awkwardly chuckled. Ryajiro, how did you know? Ryajiro looked at Naruto with a knowing gaze. All right, stop pretending and just be honest. I just heard from Mizuki-sensei that the scroll of sealing contains many interesting ninjutsu, so I wanted to take a look. And then? Then Mizuki-sensei suddenly tried to ambush me. After I gave him a beating, Iruka-sensei came and took me to see the Hokage. And then I came back. So, it was Mizuki after all. But this plot did undergo some changes. Mizuki got beaten by Naruto, and Iruka didn't suffer any fatal injuries. Though the alterations were minor, they still affected the original storyline. Show me what you've learned. Ryajiro said casually. Naruto became flustered and widened his eyes in shock. Whoa. Ryajiro, you even know about that? Multiple Shadow Clone Jutsu. Bam bam bam. The room suddenly filled with many Naruto clones. Naruto's house was already small, and with so many clones gathering, it became even more crowded. Indeed, multiple shadow clone jutsu. Ryajiro wasn't surprised, in fact, he found it quite normal. But. Hey. Stop pushing me. You're the one pushing me. It's you. It's you. It's you. Naruto's clones started arguing and the room instantly became noisy. People outside heard and thought Naruto was up to something in the house. After dispelling the clones, Naruto wiped the sweat off his forehead. Do you want me to teach you this jutsu? Naruto smirked temptingly. No need. I'm not interested. Multiple shadow clone jutsu consumed too much chakra, and it could even drain one's chakra reserves in an instant because of the enormous amount required. That's why it was classified as a forbidden jutsu. Only someone like Naruto, who was an Uzumaki and has access to Nine Tails Chakra, could use it without hesitation. Naruto's face stiffened. He thought he could tempt Ryajiro with forbidden techniques, but who would have thought Ryajiro wasn't interested at all? Ryajiro. But this is a forbidden jutsu. A forbidden jutsu. Oh, so what? Isn't a forbidden jutsu powerful? I can now finally beat you. Naruto. Can't have any fun anymore. Naruto, disheartened, lowered his head and, like Suzuki the day before, fell into silence, a sign of disappointment. Truly, they were good buddies. The relationship between Naruto and Suzuki was still good, although they sometimes bickered due to the competitive nature, typical of children their age. These two sets of good buddies had a pretty good relationship now. In the subsequent school life, Ryajiro continued to send shadow clones to school, and only during major exams would his real self appear. As for Hinata, due to her family reasons, even though she could use shadow clones now, she still went to school in person. And so. Time passed. At the edge of a cliff, Ryajiro, now towering at 1.77 meters, 5 feet 8 inches, stood. In the eyes of his peers, Ryajiro seemed like a giant. Hinata and Naruto stayed far away because that's what Ryajiro instructed them to do. What are you doing, Ryajiro? Naruto asked puzzled. In the next moment, Hinata suddenly widened her eyes and looked at Ryajiro. In an instant, her eyes contracted sharply. That momentum. Ryajiro's sword exuded a flying aura, and his dark green eyes gleamed with a divine light. Armament Haki. Black Blade. Flash. Clang. A sharp sword sound was heard as a massive black slash soared into the sky, reaching a height of 17 or 18 meters. In the air, even the white clouds parted as the black slash split them in two. A storm erupted, overturning everything around. Boom. 
Underneath the black slash, not far away, a mountain peak was severed right before Hinata and Naruto's eyes. The mountain crumbled, shrouding everything in a cloud of dust, even attracting the attention of the third Hokage in the village. At this moment, the Uchiha clan, Anbu, and Root all rushed toward the sliced-off mountain peak. The mountain, the mountain was destroyed by Ryajiro. Oh my god! Is Ryajiro a monster? Can the third Hokage really slice a mountain peak? Even Naruto began to doubt if the Hokage of the village could beat Ryajiro. Hinata, at this moment, was shocked speechless, unable to calm her heart for a long time. S rank. That slash. It's the power of an S rank ninjutsu. No. Even an S rank ninjutsu couldn't slice a mountain peak. Just how terrifying is Ryajiro's strength? Phew. Ryajiro exhaled heavily, and the sharp edge in his eyes gradually faded away. A year ago, Ryajiro had already stepped into the realm of the Great Swordsman, but within that year, he still wasn't a match for Myhawk in his mental world. Because Myhawk in his mental world belonged to his peak. Even though Ryajiro had stepped into the realm of the Great Swordsman, he still wasn't Myhawk's match. Character Template, Dracul Myhawk. Character Unlock Progress, 73.3%. Though Ryajiro would still eventually lose to Myhawk, it wouldn't be as disastrous as before. And now, what he severed was just a small mountain peak, while Myhawk's slash could effortlessly split a large mountain peak in two. There was still a gap between him and Myhawk. Chapter 15, Ryajiro vs Itaki As the dust settled from the sky, the faces of the arriving shinobi all showed expressions of utter disbelief. What, what happened here? Hey hey hey! Am I dreaming? The mountain. It's been severed. Shinobi from Anbu, Root, as well as the Kanaha police force, all stood in shock as they gazed at the severed peak. The smooth cut resembled that of a blade slicing through butter. Such a sight was unprecedented in their lives. What kind of power could sever a mountain like this? In their understanding, only the tailed beasts and the legendary first Hokage possessed such power. Even the third Hokage in his prime probably couldn't cause such massive destruction. What's going on here? Danzo rushed over, his pupils contracting at the sight of the broken mountain. Danzo-sama, we arrived here to find it already like this. Such power. It's likely an S-rank ninjutsu. S-rank ninjutsu. The hearts of all the shinobi present sank. They were well aware of the power of S-rank ninjutsu, capable of massive destruction unparalleled before. But could an S-rank ninjutsu truly sever a mountain? Danzo's expression darkened considerably. Gazing at the severed mountain filled his with an unprecedented sense of crisis. Who could have done this? Was it someone from Kanaha? Or had someone infiltrated their village? Conduct thorough checks on everyone entering and leaving Kanaha. Don't let a single person slip through unnoticed. If anything unusual is found, notify me and the third Hokage immediately. Yes. With one last glance at the horrifying scene before him, Danzo left, his heart still racing. After Ryajiro and his companions returned to the village, discussions about the severed mountain filled the air. Even Hinata and Naruto couldn't calm their hearts. The gap with Ryajiro is so vast. How did Ryajiro train? Naruto clenched his fists, feeling low. He had thought that mastering the Shadow Clone Jutsu would allow him to keep up with Ryajiro, but after two years, Naruto felt the gap between them was like a chasm. Especially the strike that severed the mountain it made Naruto keenly feel the difference between them. Ryajiro, I'm going to train. With those words, Naruto disappeared from Ryajiro's sight. It seems Naruto was affected. Hinata murmured. Ryajiro then took Hinata's delicate hand and smiled. If he follows my training method, after some time he will also become stronger. But now he's gone, so no one will disturb us. Hinata blushed and lowered her head instinctively. Ryajiro had become even more charming than before. With his short black hair and his dark green eyes, he naturally drew people's attention. Ryajiro was wearing a black shirt and tan baggy training pants with a black belt weaved through the waist that was custom made for him. With his height reaching 1.77 meters and his mature demeanor, he seemed like a young adult. A few months later, something unprecedented and terrifying happened in Kanaha. The Uchiha clan was exterminated. Once a prestigious clan in Kanaha, the Uchiha had produced many outstanding individuals. But overnight, they were wiped out, leaving people feeling a mix of emotions. What shocked the people of Kanaha even more was that the culprit turned out to be Ataki Uchiha, the son of the Uchiha clan leader, the once brilliant prodigy, 
just like Uchiha Shisui. Now, only Suzuki, the last of the Uchiha clan, remained in Kanaha. Some lamented, while others gloated. There were plenty in the village who had harbored ill feelings toward the Uchiha. Since the Uchiha massacre, Sasuke's personality had undergone a drastic change. He became aloof and arrogant, refusing to speak to anyone. His two fang girls, Ino and Sakura, felt sorry for Suzuki, but whenever they tried to comfort him, they were met with his cold gaze. Valley of the End Raijiro looked at the desolate figure before him and said, Contacting me at a time like this, aren't you afraid I'll take you back to the village? Itaka turned around, his Manjiki Sharingan locking onto Raijiro. Suzuki. Is he okay? Raijiro chuckled. Do you think he could be okay facing this situation? Now he only wants to get stronger to kill you. Itaka lowered his head, sighing. As long as his power exceeds his hatred for me, that's enough. Between the village and the clan, you ultimately chose the village. Raijiro said casually. Itaka stared at Raijiro, disbelief written all over his face. You know. Raijiro did not answer. There were very few things in the village that Raijiro didn't know about, his knowledge even extended to the dealings between Danzo and Orochimaru behind the scenes. Tell me, you didn't just bring me here for Suzuki, did you? Itaka looked at Raijiro, scrutinizing him carefully. Is this boy really so young? The feeling Raijiro gave him now was different. He sensed a threat emanating from Raijiro. Itaka was well aware of his own strength. Even the current third Hokage might not be his match, yet he could feel a threat from Raijiro. It seems, I can't figure you out. There are many in the village who can't figure me out. You're not the only one. Itaka drew out a kunao, his Manjiki Sharingan fixed on Raijiro, and said indifferently. This is the only thing I wanted to know before leaving the village. Let me see how much your strength has grown. Ha, I also want to see how strong I am now. Raijiro drew his sword, Haki coating his hand and blade. Seeing the black substance on Raijiro's hand, Itaka furrowed his brow. What is this? Regular ninjutsu? Or a keki ai genkai? Itaka once suspected whether Raijiro had a keki ai genkai, otherwise, how could a civilian grow to this extent? Was this black substance what he speculated to be the keki ai genkai? Raijiro probably didn't expect that Itaka would mistake Haki for a keki ai genkai. What are you doing? Itaka looked at Raijiro, puzzled as he closed his eyes. The Uchiha are most famous for their Sharingan. If I don't make eye contact with you, your Sharingan Genjutsu shouldn't work. Raijiro's words were correct, but could he unleash his full power with his eyes closed? In the blink of an eye, the voices of the two disappeared as if they had vanished. Asterisk clang. Asterisk. The collision between Kunao and Sword erupted into dazzling sparks. Raijiro was no longer the same as before. The black Kunao was sliced in half by the sharp blade of Raijiro's sword. Itaki retreated several steps in shock, staring at Raijiro in astonishment. Itaki, don't underestimate me. Otherwise, you'll die. An, there was some mistake in timeline by me, so MC isn't really 9. I will correct that in Chunin exam arc as in that arc I would be able to get proper age of every main character in Naruto, so just bear with me. And there might be some small inconsistency here and there as it has been too long since I watched Naruto, but these small errors won't matter that much in the story. I will try to fix them if possible. Chapter 16, Kakashi Hataki Itaka's eyes contracted, and a few more shurikens appeared in his hand. The moment they were thrown, Itaka quickly formed seals. Fire Style Phoenix Fire Jutsu From Itaka's mouth, several fireballs were continuously spewed out, the scorching heat causing the surrounding temperature to rise. But under Raijiro's observation Haki, he had already anticipated what Itaka would do. Clang! 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 All the shurikens were deflected. Raijiro's sword blocked the attack from Itaka behind him. Once again, the kunao broke into two pieces. Even with your eyes closed, you can sense my location. Such a terrifying perception. Itaka's expression became unusually serious. The combat experience and mature mindset displayed by the young man in front of him were not something that could be possessed at his age. In the next moment, a fierce aura emanated from Raijiro. Instantly, Itaka felt a sense of threat and quickly distanced himself from Raijiro. Yet even so, Raijiro's figure seemed to disappear, and the next moment he appeared in front of Itaka. 
In an instant he drew his sword. Black blade. Flash. Zing. At the moment the blade flashed, an extremely dazzling light deprived Ataki Uchiha of his sight. Boom. Behind Ataki, the continuous spread of the slash extended for 40 to 50 meters, like a monstrous beast destroying everything underfoot. The ground cracked and trembled uncontrollably. In the instant of the slash's spread, it exploded with a thunderous roar. The shockwave rushed forth, like a hurricane, snapping trees and covering the sky with dust. Under the slash, the scattered stones turned into nothingness. Itaka stiffly turned his head, his face filled with horror as he looked at the abyss behind him. The two statues of the Valley of the End also showed cracks. Gulp. Itaka couldn't help but swallow hard, staring at Raijiro in horror. This, is your strength. At this moment, Raijiro had already sheathed his sword. If he hadn't held back in that moment of vulnerability, Itaka might have died under his sword. However, Raijiro didn't do that because there was no killing intent from Itaki, it was just an ordinary confrontation. Yet. Raijiro opened his eyes, his gaze fixed on Itaki. How many times can you perform such a slash? Itaka looked gravely at Raijiro. Raijiro glanced at Itaki indifferently and said calmly, this is just an ordinary slash. Such a power can be used effortlessly. Itaka stood still for a long time, dumbfounded. As a cold and aloof figure in this world, Itaka was as stunned as a log. Such a slash, comparable to an S-rank ninjutsu, could be unleashed, casually. Is what he said true or false? Regardless of its truth, Ryajiro at such a young age already possessed the strength of a cage. Thinking of this, Itaka could no longer remain calm. If this news spread throughout the entire ninja world, it would likely cause a sensation. Such swordsmanship was already more terrifying than the former White Fang. If a casual strike is an S-rank ninjutsu, who in this ninja world could threaten Raijiro? Did we make too much noise? It seems someone is coming. Raijiro's observation Haki sensed several auras rapidly approaching. Perhaps because of the commotion caused by the previous slash, it attracted the attention of the Kanaha village ninjas. Itaka furrowed his brow. He didn't detect any ninjas within his sensing range. No matter how skilled the Kanaha village's sensing department was, they probably couldn't match up to Raijiro's perception. If possible, I hope you can take care of Suzuki for me. Itaka's words echoed faintly in the valley. Raijiro clicked his tongue and then turned his head, casting a serious glance at another location. Just now, that place. Was it Obito? Troublesome. If that guy sets his sights on them, it won't be good. Just as Raijiro turned around, several voices suddenly appeared in front of him. Kakashi Hotaki, Asuma Saratobi, Might Guy. Might Guy looked at the changes in the landscape not far away and exclaimed in shock. What happened here? This situation seems similar to when that mountain peak was cut off in Kanaha. Has the terrain been altered? Seeing the cracks extending tens of meters deep, the three jonin fell into contemplation, then unconsciously shifted their gaze to Raijiro. This kid looks familiar. Oh. I remember now, speaking of which, Kakashi. This guy is hailed as a genius who can rival you. His swordsmanship is said to be as exquisite as Sakumo-sensei. Did Sakumo-san secretly have another kid behind your back? Asuma teased with a wicked smile. Asuma. Asuma noticed Kakashi's unfriendly gaze and quickly shut his mouth, not saying another word. In terms of strength, he was no match for Kakashi. After all, Kakashi's reputation as the copy ninja had already spread to the other four major ninja villages. Kakashi's dark expression gradually softened, and then he carefully scrutinized Raijiro in front of him. This young man was not simple, his unique aura and the sword at his waist completely concealed his sharpness. Even if they had never met before, Kakashi could feel the extraordinary nature of the young man in front of him. Young man, do you know what just happened here? Might Guy grinned and asked. Facing the three jonin, Raijiro's expression remained unchanged, but his gaze lingered on Kakashi for a long time. So this was the legendary Kakashi Hotaki. Regardless of who his opponent was, it seemed like he always had an equal chance of winning, like he had some plot armor. You say Kakashi is strong, right? He wasn't particularly strong, just slightly stronger than an elite jonin. With the use of Kamui, Kakashi's strength might already be close to that of a cage. But during the pain invasion, Kakashi and the six paths of pain could fight evenly, or even might have a slight advantage. Then there were later fights with Madara Uchiha, Kagaya Atsutsuki. 
his strength increased according to the opponent's strength. Kakashi felt Ryajiro's gaze and expression becoming somewhat unnatural. Ryajiro, what exactly happened here? Don't be afraid, even if that person comes again, the three of us have the power to fight him. Asuma thought Ryajiro might have been scared by something that happened earlier, so he comforted him. Ryajiro couldn't be bothered to even look at him, calmly saying, Itaki Uchiha was here. Chapter 17, Ryajiro Reveals Himself the expressions of the three individuals suddenly changed. Itaki Uchiha They all wore solemn expressions as they gazed at the devastated surrounding and the narrow mountain peaks, a hint of dread creeping into their eyes. It's Uchiha Itaki. That explains it, but when did he master such terrifying ninjutsu? Such power rivals even S-rank jutsu. It's swordsmanship. Uchiha Itaki, the mastermind behind the Uchiha clan massacre, a wanted S-rank missing nin by the village. None of them understood why Itaki would slaughter his own clan, but in their minds, he was an extremely dangerous individual. Only the third Hokage and Danzo knew about Itaki's relationship with the higher UPS in Kanaha. Asuma, report the situation here to the third Hokage. Guy, scout the surroundings for any other presence. I'll take this kid, Ryajiro, back to the village. Kakashi said earnestly. Asuma and Guy had no objections. Guy was responsible for scouting for any other enemies nearby, while Asuma was already on his way to meet the third Hokage. As Kakashi and Ryajiro walked, they remained silent. The atmosphere was tense, but after glancing at the sword hanging from Ryajiro's waist, Kakashi spoke up. Was that commotion caused by Itaki? Kakashi had always been wary of the kid beside him. Perhaps Asuma and Guy couldn't sense it, but Kakashi, a veteran of the Third Great Ninja War, felt a sense of danger emanating from the boy. It wasn't often that an elite jonin felt threatened. Kakashi-san. If I told you that the commotion was caused by me, would you believe it? Ryajiro flashed a mischievous smile at Kakashi, and in the next moment, his figure disappeared from Kakashi's sight. Kakashi stood frozen in shock. That terrain-altering ninjutsu was because of Ryajiro? Itaki was a dangerous individual. If Ryajiro had truly encountered him, there was no way he would come out unscathed. The only explanation was that this kid harbored some undisclosed secrets. And if Itaki indeed possessed such terrifying ninjutsu, the village would have some knowledge of it, even if limited. They couldn't be completely clueless. The split mountain peak, the cracks spreading hundreds of meters across the ground these were the work of this kid. It was hard for Kakashi to believe at first. Was it swordsmanship? Whether it was the previously severed mountain peak or the cracks he had just witnessed, they resembled the work of a blade leaving behind similar traces. Even his father, as skilled as he was in swordsmanship, probably couldn't wield such terrifying power. What secrets did this kid conceal? Dash. In the Hokage's office, Hiruzen frowned at Kakashi. Kakashi, are you saying that all the previous disturbances were caused by Ryajiro? Ryajiro hasn't even reached in full potential right now and even S-rank ninjutsu might not be capable of the environmental changes we've witnessed. Are you sure about this? Facing the third Hokage's questioning, Kakashi was momentarily speechless because he lacked direct evidence to prove that all those destruction were caused by Ryajiro. But combining Ryajiro's words with his own gut feeling, Kakashi was certain that the severed mountain peaks and the changes in the Valley of the End were definitely linked to Ryajiro. Although I lack evidence, I felt a sense of threat from Ryajiro when I was with him. A sense of threat. Hiruzen's expression shifted. To make an elite jonin like you feel threatened is indeed concerning. Hiruzen gazed out at the scenery of Kanaha, lost in thought. All right, I understand. You may leave. Kakashi exited the Hokage's office. Yamato, try to test that kid for me. Yes, Hokage-sama. At night, after training with Hinata, Raijiro left the Hayaga compound. The streets of Kanaha were quiet at night, but Raijiro seemed to sense something. Shu, shu, shu. Several kunao flew towards Raijiro. Armament Haki. Instead of drawing his sword, Ryajiro covered his hands with Armament Haki and deflected the kunao. That mask. Ryajiro's expression shifted slightly. It's Yamato. It seemed the third Hokage already knew. Kakashi was suspicious after all. Now, Ryajiro no longer needed to hide his strength. The reason he concealed his power before was that he hadn't reached the level of a cage. But now that he had attained that level, he had no worries. The collision between Yamato's kunao and Ryajiro's armament haki-covered fist produced a metallic clashing sound. Ding, 
Ding, ding. As Yamato continued to fight, he became increasingly wary. This kid's Taijutsu had reached such a level. What was the black substance on his hands? Was it Ninjutsu or Akekiai Genkai? This kid under the third Hokage was truly extraordinary. It was the third Hokage who sent you, right? There's no need for further tests. Take me to see him. The armament haki on Raijiro's hands had disappeared as he looked calmly at Yamato. This maturity. Yamato gained another impression of Raijiro. Follow me. Yamato said coldly. It was already late at night, but the lights in the Hokage's office were still on. As the Hokage, there was no rest until all the village's affairs were settled. Hokage-sama, Raijiro, is here. From outside the door, Yamato's voice echoed. Hiruzen paused his work and looked at the incoming Raijiro with some surprise. Raising his hand, Hiruzen saw Yamato's figure disappear from the Hokage's office. Previously, Hiruzen had heard of Raijiro's various exploits but had never truly seen him in person. Now, up close, the aura emanating from this kid was undeniable. Kanaha had produced another genius on PAR with Kakashi. Perhaps in a few years, another master of swordsmanship like Sakumo would emerge. Raijiro, this should be our first meeting. Yes, Hokage-sama. Since Yamato brought you here, you must have fought with him. Raijiro nodded lightly. You should know my purpose in having Yamato test you. Hiruzen's cloudy eyes suddenly sharpened. Facing Hiruzen's sharp gaze, Raijiro stared back without any hint of fear. Hokage-sama, you just want to know if what Kakashi said is true. Raijiro laid his cards on the table. Concealing his strength blindly was useless, only by truly showing his power could he inspire fear. The incidents at the Valley of the End were indeed caused by me. But just the day before, I fought with Itaki Uchiha. What? He fought Itaka too. Chapter 18, Applying for Graduation Hiruzen's eyes widened, a strong sense of astonishment reflected in them. Fight with Itaki? How could this be possible? Hiruzen knew Itaka's strength very well. Itaka had already activated his main Jakyo Sharingan. Even the third Hokage couldn't guarantee that he could match Itaki. For a moment, Hiruzen stopped thinking. After calming down for a while, he began to look seriously at Raijiro. Who won between you and Itaki? Hiruzen asked solemnly. The outcome? Raijiro pondered for a moment. If it was solely based on strength, he believed he far surpassed Itaki. However, Itaka still had Tsukuyomi, Amaterasu, Suzanu, and other abilities. Moreover, he hadn't fought Itaka with his full strength so he couldn't be sure how would these abilities of Itaka fare against him. But even then, he believed he could easily defeat Itaki if they were to fight for real. And the main issue here was he didn't want to reveal all his cards in front of Hiruzen so he chose to give a diplomatic answer. It's 50-50, Raijiro replied calmly. Hiruzen sucked in a breath after hearing what Raijiro said. Did that mean the Raijiro in front of him already possessed the strength of a cage? Of course. Whether what Raijiro said was true or not remained to be seen, but this kid in front of him was definitely not simple. This attitude, this composure. If Raijiro's background wasn't clean, Hiruzen might have seen him as a threat. With your strength, you don't need to continue studying at the Ninja Academy. Yes, Hokage-sama. This time I've come to apply for early graduation. Raijiro stated plainly. Raijiro knew he currently possessed great strength but his power wasn't growing at the rate he wanted. So, to rapidly improve himself Raijiro knew he had to face real-life combat and that couldn't be done staying in academy. That's why he wanted to graduate early and go on missions. I approve your application. With your strength, there's indeed no need for you to stay at the ninja school any longer. However, to confirm your strength, I will arrange for a jonin to test you. Is that okay with you? Hiruzen greatly admired the village's talents and appreciated civilian geniuses. However, he found it difficult to let go of Raijiro. Raijiro's personality and composure were not as straightforward as Minato's. When Hiruzen first saw Raijiro, he knew that such a character would be difficult to control and restrain in the village. No problem, Hokage-sama. But it was just a jonin test. Even if it was an elite jonin like Kakashi, Raijiro was confident he could defeat them. Moreover, it was just a test of strength, there was no need to exert 100% of his power. After Raijiro left, Hiruzen lowered his head and sighed. Things are getting out of control. Raijiro was indeed a genius, 
but if a genius grew too fast, it would make people wary because such individuals were prone to getting out of control. Especially for Hiruzen, who had experienced Orochimaru's betrayal. Dash. The next day, Hiruzen leaned against his head slightly, facing Danzo, who was holding a cane on the other side of the office. Danzo, if it's about Raijiro, I'll say it again. I won't hand that child over to you. Danzo looked at his old friend with a gloomy gaze. Hiruzen, why don't you understand until now? Only Root can handle that child. Only powerful ninjas are qualified to bear the darkness of Kanaha. It's a waste of his talent to let other Jonin guide him. As long as that child joins Root, I will personally guide him. That child is not like Minato. He won't be easily bound by others. Danzo insinuated with a cold gaze. With the ability to cut through mountains, that kid definitely had some secret. Once he obtained this secret jutsu, the position of Hokage would be within easy reach. No, no matter what you say, I won't hand this child over to Root. Root is not suitable for him. Hiruzen, you're still so naive. Someday you'll regret it. With a cold snort, Danzo left the Hokage's office in annoyance. Watching his departing figure, Hiruzen muttered to himself. Danzo, that kid's strength has already exceeded Root's control. He doesn't belong to Root, he belongs to Kanaha. We old folks will continue to shine the light on the village and let the new leaves sprout. Another ninja reaching the level of a cage in swordsmanship was extremely important for Kanaha, especially now that they had lost the Uchiha clan. Dash. The graduation application was scheduled for the afternoon, so Raijiro was not in a hurry. Naruto had already become one of the top students in the academy. And there was nothing more for him to teach Naruto now. Let the timeline proceed as in the original story. He arrived at the Haiga compound. Hayashi and Raijiro sat at the table, while Hinata pushed open the door, brewed tea, and placed it in front of the two. I'm applying for early graduation. Raijiro said lightly. Hinata's father, holding a cup of tea, suddenly paused as the cup floated in midair, but he quickly regained his composure. With your strength, you can indeed apply for early graduation. Raijiro kun. Hinata hesitated, biting her lip. Suddenly, a hint of determination flashed in her eyes. Father, I also want to apply for early graduation with Raijiro. No. Hayashi refused without even thinking. Hinata's face turned pale instantly. Hayashi had seen Hinata's change in strength with his own eyes. But Hinata was the eldest daughter of the Haiga clan, and now she was even more outstanding than Niji. In the future, Hinata would become the head of the Haiga clan. And he didn't want her to be exposed to the darkness and dirt of the ninja world at such a young age. Why, father? Even if my strength is not as good as Raijiro's, it's still far stronger than an average genin. I have nothing more to learn at the ninja school now. Hinata said with reluctance. Continuing at the ninja school would only widen the gap between her and Raijiro. Hinata didn't want to be left behind by Raijiro. You are the eldest daughter of the family. To become a ninja, strength alone is not enough. Intervening in ninja affairs recklessly could cost you your life. Hayashi looked at her solemnly. Although on the surface, Hayashi seemed indifferent to Hinata, how could he ignore his love for his daughter? Unlike Raijiro, Hinata's attitude, composure, and sharpness were already impossible to hide. Hayashi seemed to see the former Kanaha White Fang once again. Hinata, what your father said is not wrong. A ninja's hands are stained with blood. Raijiro agreed with Hinata's father. Hinata's current strength could indeed spar with low-level Chunin, but her strength was still too weak. This world had many powerful ninjas. Each member of Akatsuki alone could be compared to a cage-level ninja. Moreover, Hinata, with the Byakugan, would inevitably attract the attention of other villages besides the Haiga clan. Chapter 19, Raijiro vs. Kakashi Raijiro, I'm afraid I can't keep up with your pace, Hinata said, sounding like a distressed little girl. Sighing inwardly, Raijiro gently embraced Hinata and said, Even if one day I stand at the pinnacle of this world, I will still be the Raijiro you know. In that moment, the way Hinata and Hayashi looked at Raijiro changed. What ambition and determination! To aspire to the pinnacle of the ninja world, wanting to become a god of shinobi like the first Hokage. Under Raijiro's comforting words, Hinata gradually calmed down. She silently agreed with Raijiro and her father's words. Dash. Why are there so many jonins gathered at school today? Kakashi Hotaki, Kurane Yui, Asuma Saratobi, 
Might Guy, the academy student, all exclaimed. Hey, have you heard? It seems that Rai Jiro has applied for early graduation. Could these Jonans be here to test Rai Jiro? What? Early graduation. The kids from the ninja school all gasped, even though not everyone in the ninja school was in the same class, everyone knew Rai Jiro, the top student. Even the older students were no match for this Rai Jiro. Applying for early graduation, only a genius could do such a thing, and Rai Jiro happened to be that kind of genius. Listening to the conversation, Suzuki in the classroom clenched his fists, his body trembling slightly. That guy actually applied for early graduation. And he was still at the ninja school. When would he be able to kill Ataki? If he had that kind of strength, maybe he could have prevented that tragedy that night. Look. It's Rai Jiro. Wow. Rai Jiro is so handsome, he's like the man of my dreams. Why does Rai Jiro, who is only a year older than us, look so tall? When Rai Jiro appeared at the Ninja Academy, all the students were excited. The dream of every student in the academy was to become an outstanding ninja, and naturally, they admired the strong. Kakashi, is this the boy you were talking about? What do you think, Kurane? This kid is quite extraordinary. Asuma lit a cigarette, took a deep drag, and said with relish. Kurane looked at Rai Jiro, then glanced at the excited students around her. He's quite popular. But this child is indeed different, that kind of unmistakable sharpness is not common for kid his age. Rai Jiro. You applied for early graduation without informing me. That's so annoying. Naruto came out dissatisfied. Rai Jiro smiled faintly, there's no need to make a big fuss about early graduation, but it seems like you all know now. It seemed like the news had been spread by the third Hokage. Was it to create the birth of a genius and make Rai Jiro popular across the village and also show Kanaha's might to other villages? Indeed, the more popular the genius, the easier it was to be bound by the village. Rai Jiro understood this little trick of the third Hokage. Rai Jiro, now that you've done it, I also want to apply for early graduation too. You. The third Hokage won't agree. Rai Jiro glanced lightly at Naruto. As the Jinchuriki, even if Naruto's performance at school was really outstanding, because of his special status, the third Hokage would not let Naruto graduate early. Rai Jiro, you're underestimating me. Although I'm not powerful like you, my strength is not bad. Even now, I can fight evenly with that arrogance is okay. Naruto looked proud, who would have thought that two years ago he was the last in the class. Now he could fight evenly with Suzuki. Genius? Is Naruto a genius? He is now. Hey. Look. It's Hokage-sama. The appearance of the third Hokage caused a commotion among the students, even Naruto looked at the third Hokage with admiration. After all, Naruto's dream was to become Hokage, someone recognized by everyone. Hokage-sama. Hiruzen walked up to the four jonin, and they respectfully greeted him. It seemed that everyone in the school knew, the effect of spreading the news was quite impressive. Can we start now, Hokage-sama? Hiruzen nodded slightly. F. With the permission of the third Hokage, Kakashi solemnly announced, Rai Jiro. Based on your performance at school, Hokage Sama has agreed to your graduation application. However, this assessment will be practical combat, and according to the instructions of the third Hokage, your combat assessment subject is none other than me. Hearing this, many people gasped, even the other three Jonin stared at Kakashi with wide eyes. Is this a joke? The one Rai Jiro must fight is actually Jonin Kakashi. Even if Rai Jiro is amazing, he can't possibly be a match for a Jonin. Kakashi san is already a well known Jonin, the famous copy ninja. Asuma looked at Hiruzen with incomprehension. What was his old man thinking? How could this kid possibly pass the assessment when facing Kakashi? Does his old man have some other plan? Kurane frowned, it seemed that the Hokage and Kakashi knew something. Could this kid still have some secrets? But no matter what, Kurane also believed that Rai Jiro had a slight chance of winning against Kakashi. Kakashi and Rai Jiro stood facing each other, and Kakashi, who knew everything, looked at the seemingly indifferent Rai Jiro with seriousness. Was what Rai Jiro said true? Although the students at the ninja school all believed that Rai Jiro wouldn't win against Kakashi, they were still looking forward to see Rai Jiro's strength in this fight. How many moves could he last against a Jonin? Start. With a command from the third Hokage, Rai Jiro's figure disappeared in an instant. Is it the body flicker jutsu? 
Kakashi's heart sank, his right hand holding a kunao was placed in front of his chest. Ding! With a sound, Kakashi was sent flying a distance by a heavy force. Such a heavy attack! Was that black substance the thing the third Hokage mentioned, possibly a Kekiai Genkai? It could harden the body, achieving a steel-like effect, this was his ability. What is that black substance? Kekiai Genkai. But Ryajiro's parents were just ordinary jonin, neither of them had a Kekiai Genkai. Kakashi seems to be getting serious. Chapter 20, Passing the Assessment Kakashi dashed around Ryajiro, throwing several shuriken from his hand. Clang clang clang. Ryajiro dispelled his armament haki, unsheathed his sword, and swung it a few times, causing the incoming shuriken to scatter on the ground. Meanwhile, Kakashi swiftly formed hand seals. Fire release. Great fireball jutsu. Kakashi took a deep breath, gathering chakra in his throat, then spewed out a massive fireball towards Ryajiro. The students of the ninja academy, witnessing Kakashi's execution of the great fireball jutsu, erupted into gasps. The great fireball jutsu. Indeed, the scale of chakra and the range of the jutsu were different. It was twice as large as Sasuke's great fireball. However, it was just a great fireball. Swoosh. A plain and simple slash descended, a dazzling blade flashed before everyone's eyes. Boom. A slash towering 7 to 8 meters high tore through the academy's training ground. The exaggerated power and suffocating sensation caused Kakashi's eyes to contract involuntarily. Was this a slash? The massive fireball instantly split into two halves and exploded, causing the training ground to tremble. But the slash didn't stop there, it rapidly spread towards Kakashi's position. The speed of the slash wasn't slow, but visually, it gave a sense of slow propagation. When Kakashi came to his senses, he instantly used body flicker jutsu to evade this terrifying slash. Rumble. The moment the slash burst apart, countless rubble splattered, leaving a horrifying trench on the school's training ground. The moment Kakashi appeared with body flicker, Ryajiro had already captured Kakashi's position. A residual image remained in place. A horizontally sweeping blade again appeared dazzlingly before Kakashi's eyes, freezing everything for a moment. The cold blade pressed against Kakashi's neck, making him stiff. Ryajiro grinned, looks like I've won, Kakashi-san. When the dust settled, the students of the ninja academy looked at the horrifying silhouette on the ground, wearing expressions of disbelief. Such a perception. Asuma looked at Ryajiro in shock his turbulent heart unable to calm down for a long time. I lost. Kakashi sighed helplessly. The students of the academy were astonished, watching the man with short hair and dark green eyes. What was that reddish dark slash just now? Ryajiro defeated Kakashi-san. Doesn't that mean he's already on PAR with Jonin? Looking at the straight crack on the ground, the students of the ninja academy wore expressions of horror, unable to calm down for a long time. Suzuki clenched his fists his blood-red eyes showing black Tomo. Why? Why was the gap between him and Raijiro so huge, when he was supposed to be the Uchiha prodigy? If he had such strength, could he have prevented the tragedy from happening that day? Power. I need more power. The crazy thought sprouted in Sasuke's heart, the seed of hatred rapidly growing within him. Raijiro is truly amazing. Was that dark slash produced by swordsmanship? I've never seen such terrifying swordsmanship. It's as if I saw myself in the past, my youth is still burning. Might Guy looked at Raijiro with passionate eyes. At this moment, both Kurane and Asuma wore expressions of disbelief, staring wide-eyed at Raijiro. Even though Kakashi had held back, the fight ended much faster than they had expected. In that instant, this young man seemed to anticipate where Kakashi would appear. Such keen perception, even the sensory ninja in the village might not have such outstanding perception. This kid. He's a genius even more terrifying than Kakashi was in his youth. At this moment, the entire examination site fell into silence, with only the sound of the breeze whispering in their ears. All the jonin present understood that Kanaha would once again have a young talent even more outstanding than Kakashi. Back then, Hitaki Sakumo, with his swordsmanship, made the other four major ninja villages fearful of his sword skills, making Kanaha truly the number one ninja village. But just because of the village and Danzo's plan, public opinion gradually pushed Sakumo onto the path of suicide, ultimately causing Kanaha to lose a top-level ninja for no reason. Hiruzen stood up, looking at Raijiro's relieved smile, he solemnly announced. 
In the name of Hokage, I officially declare that Raijiro has successfully passed the assessment and officially becomes a Kanaha Jenin. Hiruzen wanted to directly promote Raijiro to Jonin, but that would seem unfair to other students and even to other Jenin and Chunin present in the village. To become a Jonin of Kanaha village, a ninja needed to follow certain steps, not even geniuses like Kakashi or Itaki were directly promoted to Jonin. Even Kakashi had to apply for early graduation, complete missions, pass the Chunin exams and again complete missions of high rank to be promoted to rank of Jonin. It was the same for Itaka who did all that, became Chunin and later got directly promoted to Anvu captain. Kanaha village once again welcomed a stunning swordsmanship genius. The students of the Ninja Academy admired Raijiro. Although they entered the Ninja Academy, it didn't mean they could pass the graduation assessment smoothly. But Raijiro not only graduated early but also successfully became a genin. The key was that Raijiro's opponent in the actual combat was not an ordinary ninja but the long-standing famous Kakashi. At this moment, countless students regarded Raijiro as their idol, aspiring to become proud figures like him in the future. After completing all the procedures, Hiruzen personally placed the Kanaha headband on Raijiro's head. Congratulations, Raijiro, on becoming a genin. Although your strength is outstanding, becoming a ninja requires more than just strength. Which one of the four jonin present here would you like to be your teacher? Hiruzen smiled kindly. Choosing a jonin instructor, hey. Raijiro glanced around. With his strength, he didn't really need a jonin instructor, but just graduated ninjas needed a jonin instructor to accompany them to undertake village missions. Among the present jonin, Kurane and Asuma were not even within Raijiro's consideration, they were both took weak. Might guy, who possessed the eight gates, well, Raijiro did have some thoughts about the eight gates. With his powerful physique and the possibility of unlocking additional character templates, if he could learn the eight gates, he would be able to face monsters of six paths level. Hokage-sama, I choose Gai-sensei. Raijiro looked at Hiruzen and said. Might guy? Raijiro's choice surprised Hiruzen. He originally thought Raijiro would choose an elite jonin like Kakashi. But unexpectedly, he chose Might Guy, who specialized in Taijutsu, which was quite unexpected. Might Guy widened his eyes, looking at Raijiro incredulously. Had he misheard? Raijiro actually chose him as his jonin instructor. This was simply too unexpected. Guy, Raijiro has chosen you as his jonin instructor. Do you agree? Hiruzen looked at Guy and asked slowly. Hokage-sama, I am willing to become Raijiro's jonin instructor. At the same time, a smile appeared on Might Guy's face, revealing his white teeth, as he gave a thumbs up to Raijiro. Young Raijiro, welcome aboard. Thanks for listening.